just quickly before we start, mate, have you heard that rumour about Jake and Ben? What are they official now? You tell you what, I did think there was something official. No, going on there. no. Apparently, oh. Jake wants out. He wants to focus on his own YouTube channel. You, what YouTube channel? Well, exactly. You know, the one you made all those graphics for told me it took you five days. Six days, Tom. It took me six days. Channel 72, more like channel bloody seven take away two equals how many videos you're going to get a season. Yeah, God, there's... sorry, that reading. Oh, sorry. That wound you up, didn't it? There's there's no chance he's leaving Ben unless there's like a proper fee involved, though. Hang on. Hang on, that's my phone. Oh, this is very unprofessional. Hang on one sec, Tom. Oh, Wardy, mate, I am panicking. Why? What's up, mate? It's Ben. That reporter leaked that I wanted to leave him. Today of all days, it has been a nightmare. Which reporter? You know the one that told you that Ryan Hardy was going to sign for Oxford on deadline day? Yeah, he was up for sale, wasn't he? Um, actually signed a new contract at Plymouth and then won the league title and has scored about 10 goals in the championship so far this year. That fella. Oh, right. Yeah, mate. Don't worry about it. Ben won't find out. They don't get taught to read up north. Mate. I am from Lincoln. Oh, yeah, good point. Hang on. I'm going to start streaming with Tom. We're going live for deadline day. He'll send you the link and you can hop on the call. Yeah, sound mate, yeah. There he is. What's up, mate? <sighs> mate, I've had, a, I've had a nightmare. Literally, it's been a nightmare. It's gone out. I want to leave, Ben. I want to go somewhere else, right? I've been offered somewhere else. I need to go somewhere else. It's all over the back pages. My life is in tatters at the minute. Hello, lads, ladies, Jake. How how oh. did you join? The link, Tom. You put it in the T-Lock group chat? Yes. Oh, well done, Tom. Well done, mate. Well done. Are you proud? Oh, Jake, don't worry, mate. I've already sorted your replacement. I read. Well, I bought the audio version. I heard you wanted to leave, so I was quick on the phone to my agent. He sorted me out. No, this other one. We want about another one. Hi guys, really can't wait to get started. Privileged to be asked. Hope to contribute loads. Well, more than Jake did. Well, you did sign royalty. Yeah, three year deal and also included a buyback clause in the Jake transfer. I'm convinced he'll come back to me as soon as he realises he can't actually switch his camera on. Well, smart piece of business. Speaking of business, Tom, we better get started because this window's going to shut before we even start. Yes, well, actually, that's a very good point. To clear the air, boys, do we... Uh, I suppose we could do with some more presenters, couldn't we, Wardy? Do, do you fancy it? Good. I've got nothing better to do for the next three hours and Jake's lost his only friend, so... You know what, Tom? It, it, it's funny you mention it. I've got one of these lying about. I don't know if you boys. I think we've all got one, haven't we? Hang on, one sec. I've got, I've got one here, as well. Oh, hang on. I was going to wear this one. I wore it at the Content Awards in November. I got oh. second, by the way. <laughs> you never mentioned that before. Right. Have a good show, boys. Transfer deadline day. The T lot takeover. Let's do it. Mom, <laughs> can you give him a tie? Oh, no, apparently Jake wants out. He wants to just focus on his own channel. What? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it was going so well. It wasn't really. Right, okay. That was our first, that was our first <laughs> ever attempt. <now. laughs> I'm it's going to take longer than half an hour. Well, uh, does that get any easier watching that? Welcome back to Deadline Day Live. We're bringing you all of the hours, the remaining hours, until the window slam shut at 11pm, the T-Lop takeover. My favourite part of this so far is watching these comments. Someone's put GCSE acting on point, bad memories of GCSE drama. I think doing it, that's exactly how it felt. Um, Nappers, we'll start with the transfers shortly. First and foremost, how are you doing, mate? And do you agree that wasn't your best piece of work you've ever produced? Oh, not a great start to the three hours. 
<laughs> yeah, um, it's it, it's not my best piece, but it's still up there, and that says a lot of things at the moment. So, uh, <laughs> no, uh, no, I'm just glad to be on. Obviously, didn't get the invite last year because I was in the hospital bed, but I'm glad, glad to make this one, and um, you know, uh, a, a big deadline day, I think. Tom, does that get any easier? I mean, Napa said there, it shouldn't be his best piece, but that probably says quite a lot about what we do on a regular basis. It's up there, unfortunately. We never have to watch that ever again, which I'm delighted by. And can I just say, by the way, sorry to steal Napa's his line, and there'll be plenty of those tonight. There's over 300 people joining us across both YouTube channels and on Facebook as well. So a very good evening to you all. We are here for the duration. I'm keeping an eye on the comments early doors, as the rest of the boys will be. If there's anyone that's here at 11 o'clock this evening still with us, then you deserve an absolute medal because that is quite some effort. Um, can I take this tie off now? I'm a little bit embarrassed. I haven't <laughs> been able to find my yellow tie. So it's kind of hiding behind my microphone that I look a bit like Andy Cullen. Um, so w- with your permission, I will... Yeah, I you will take it off and off. we'll move to Jake. You, why move you undress? Not I'll undress. Much. Yeah, I'll undress. Um, there we go. You take the whole shirt <laughs> off, please, Tom. No, not... Well, maybe when we get post... When we get post-watershed, we'll, we'll see how wow. we get on. But um, not for now, no. Jake, how are you doing, mate? It's um, we, you were here from the start last time. You sort of know how these go. We haven't, we you know, we say we're going to do a running order, and then we get to about ten and realise that we've been here for hours. Uh, hopefully, this is going to carry on the conversation and quite an insightful, say insightful, interesting. How are you doing, Jake? Yeah, no, I'm good, mate. I'm glad that we no longer have to watch that back, like like Tom said. I know these sort of these are pretty much free for alls. Let's hope that we don't have another Ryan Hardy moment. Um, I'm sure somewhere, you know, people in the chat will have a T-Lop bingo card kicking along for the evening. Maybe you mentioned a Port Vale because Fleet would play them on Saturday. Maybe a Ryan Hardy. You know, we might have all sorts. M- Matty Taylor might even get a move to, to Cheltenham. So we'll have to wait. That could happen. You. But um, yeah. no, mate, I'm good. Thank you. Tom, where should we start? I mean, first and foremost, there's been I... business over this this busy transfer deadline day. We're mm. only seeing it three to eleven, but it was hotting up in the in the in the morning, and it's still been going through the evening, and now hopefully into the night. We're going to be reacting to those live transfers as they come in. The chat's going to be crucial. Like there isn't going to be business every second. We hope so. We're going to have time to sort of chat and, and go through those signings in detail, not just from deadline day, but from across the window as well. Because you know we're focusing on deadline day. It all seems to happen on one day. But remember, this has been going on. For, for quite a while now so it'll be wrapped up by tonight that's one thing that we can guarantee um but Tom where do you want to start I mean there's a lot already happening over the last couple mm. of hours um at Pompey we probably should start there because let's be honest if we are looking at the entire window you have been extremely active but one today Owen Moxon joins from Carlisle that's a permanent deal your reaction to it it's been sort of brewing over the last couple of days but it has been official uh, this morning or exactly midday I believe how do you react to that we're going to start with a £5 donation from Lynx, by the way, which is an absolute brilliant way to start the yeah. stream. He's even putting up the teal up on there, so that's almost yeah. worth double of that. Um, I will very quick, I'll get to Pompey in just a moment. Before we do so, I want to welcome all you fabulous people to the stream. It's Super Jack Hancock is here. Um, I'm playing that on Jake's wedding day, says Lynx. I think that's in uh, in relation to the uh, to earlier on. Ari said, sorry, lads, thought this was the darts. I'm off. <laughs> nice to see you, Ari. Thanks for being <laughs> with us. Uh, will Ash says, extra fan here. One more striker incoming. Maybe we'll fire us to the top. Thank you for being with us, Will. Lovely to see you. Uh, Aaron said, hit that like button, please do. T-Lop Superman, which is Logan, says, good evening. Tom, Jack, Ben and Jake, looking forward to this. A play at Pompey from Adam. Uh, hello to Archie, who's a Charlton fan. Uh, we'll talk about who's had the best window so far. Uh, Mike wants to know who Ryan Hardy is linked with. Um, hello to Andrew. Hello to Sam. And hello to Josh as well. Please do let us know where you're joining us this evening. Let us know who you support. Let us know what you want us to be talking about. Regarding Pompey, uh, yeah, very, very excited indeed. I think it's probably the most aggressive window for a very long time. We're going to start with talking about this man who um, I was absolutely delighted by today. And I know you boys will want to uh, to let me know your various thoughts on him. I spoke to Jake a lot about him yesterday on the phone and we're probably both as excited as each other about it. I think the one thing for me is... The incredible story behind this one is fantastic. Um, I I love a good underdog story and it it really gives him an opportunity, Owen, to to come here and and really prove a point. And I think the timing's fantastic in terms of, obviously, Joe Morrell will learn the extent of of his scam, which is taking place in Winchester tomorrow, I believe, um, if I'm right in saying. So 
this is a really good time for him to come in. I wouldn't be surprised if he even goes to start on Saturday. I'm that confident about him coming in. Um, I have already fallen in love with him, as, as Pepe well knows. Um, Nelio said, best transfer deadline day. Turn off Sky Sports News. Listen to you guys. So thank you very much indeed for that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> That's one thing I guarantee. <laughs> don't do that. You are, you're lovely, but you are, you're playing a risky game there. We'll, uh, we'll we'll come to to Jake and you in a minute, Jack. But but first of all, to Ben, who who probably saw Owen Moxon open his account for this season in the most spectacular of fashions at, at Brunson Park at the start of the season. Mate, should I be as excited as I am about him because he seems like a proper addition? Uh, yeah, obviously he scored three goals this season, two against Fleetwood, and obviously he can you can shoot from outside the box, and you know, I think that's what Portsmouth needs someone to unlock a, a back door at times, someone can score a goal from midfield. Um, you know, Robertson, I think that although he didn't score many goals, or what he did, you know, without scoring, and I kind of think well, he's only scored three goals, Moxon, but his attribute on that on that football team at Carlisle has been worth. 15 goals, 16 goals so far this season. So, uh, yeah, I think you should be uh, absolutely excited. Out of conduct in the summer. Um, and you, you, you've gone and got, you know, League One players that, you know, that know this level. You did it last window and this season. You, you, have, you know, you did really well in the summer window and you've done well in this window as well. And uh, you've strengthened, you've been backed. And um, the owners can't be questioned for that because you put the money where the mouth is, whether it's on wages or, or, or a transfer fee. Um, you know, Messino has now been backed and now the job is on him to so get promotion. If he doesn't get promotion, he's, I don't care. You can say, you know, they've done well this season anything other than winning promotion this season is a failure you've got to go and win promotion now yeah absolutely uh, and we'll have plenty of pompy conversation throughout the night and i'm delighted to be able to say to everyone that joins us and to the four boys um that actually the um the window is not shut for pompey so we could even get some uh, some breaking news live on here the window is not shut for oxford we know it's not shut for fleetwood given the post about the various different alarms which are uh, we are going to get on to in a minute. And we believe from reliable sources that Lincoln is still ongoing with things as well. Uh, Andrew said, always the best coverage of Pompey period. Thank you very much indeed for that. Uh, Lucas says, you are my favourite League One YouTubers. Lucas, that is very kind. Jake's not a YouTuber, but we'll take it, Lucas. Thank you very much indeed for that. Um, Sam said, gutted Pompey got Moxon. Been saying all season I'd love him at the Castad. He and Gibson have done so well for Carlisle. That's a nice place to start with you then, Wardy, I think. As Sam's saying, I'm sure you would have liked him at the Castad as well. Yes, really good signing. And I think I think Napa said it there. With the contract situation with him, it was always one where you thought he was going to move in, in the January and, and Pompey clearly had him on his had him on their list for a long time. So to get that done, to get that over the line is is massive for you. You were looking at a midfielder, I think before the Morel injury, but now you've got that extra security. So you, you look in a much better shape depth wise. And we say the best teams need quality in depth. I think that midfield probably was needing that one extra body. You've got Pat, you've got Larry, but you can't really rely on him injury wise. Morel now is obviously going to be out, we expect, for a few weeks at least. So you've got a position there that although look quite strong on paper, you've got a few players missing and suddenly mm -hmm. it looks quite bare. I mean, Devlin's having to play at right back. He was brought in as a midfielder. So you've got players that can play there, but Moxon is, is going to come in and he was obviously a huge part of, of Carlisle when they got promoted and beyond that, he has been just as good in League One. I think a few teams were, were probably sort of waited to see how he got on in League One because in, in League Two, it was, a, of course, a very competitive league, but we've seen now him do amazing things in this division. I think Pompey were linked to him in the summer. I think maybe looking at him in January is a very smart move there. He hasn't signed that contract. Maybe got a little bit lucky with that. I think when you look at the fact they were looking at him, he's done great. It's now January and he's only got six months left on that deal. To go and get that done, I think makes total sense. And I'm surprised. I imagine there were other teams in for him, but it almost felt like Pompey were the, the front runners. But... Yeah, I think, you know, Sam's right. I think Oxford would like a midfielder. We believe that isn't going to be the case. I think a striker is the one on the list for us. Um, who that is, there's a few rumours. We'll come on to names sh shortly, but I don't think a midfielder is on the list. But I think Moxon is one of those players, and you'll love me saying this, Tom, and Palmy fans will love me saying this, whether you need a midfielder or not, you bring him in. You know, he's that type of player. Do we need a midfielder? I think Moxon's that level of player that you would just bring in anyway. Um, looking across the board, we've got lots of different fans in here as well. Bolton, I think their window so far has been exceptional. But today, it has kicked off. David said their Bolton shown we mean business with four signings this window. Um and you know, we're talking about one of the, the best players last season on, on the eye, but also, of course, the, the League One player of the season, Aaron Collins. He's joined Bolton Wanderers and Nappers will, will come to you on this one. 
we're talking about a striker that hasn't been maybe as effective this season for Bristol Rovers, for Joe Barton and, and Matt Taylor. But Bolton Wanderers have snapped up somebody who was simply incredible last season. There's proven talent there. He's not of the, the old age whatsoever. He's still got plenty to give. And he's joining a side in Bolton that have one aspiration this season and to get promoted. That, for me, is a signing that screams a similar statement, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously it is a big fee. And But I think it's the biggest he's spent in the last 10, 11 years. And I think that we said last year how Plymouth and Ipswich made each other better, Sheffield Wednesday in that argument as well, nice and man. Barnsley and Barnsley to uh, Barnsley to a degree as well. And um, I think this year, I think that the top three, top four went through before prediction every game to the end of the season, and I think I've got five points between uh, my fourth place team and my first place team. Wow. That's how close I think this division is, and I think that you know Paul's going to get Moxon. And then Bolton going to get Collins and then Peterborough. You know, if they're not really needed to add Peterborough, and Derby have added, you know, the talent like the likes of Blackett Taylor as well. And um, I think Collins is is a player that will get Bolton fans up off the seat. He's, he's a different ingredient that they've not already got. Um, he'll add goals, he'll add assists, and the way he connected with the Bristol Rovers supporters, you know, you know, when they went up and you saw how much he loved the city and loved the football club. And if anyone's going to get him back into form, I don't think he's been dreadful this year. I think he's still got you know, over double digits in terms of goals slash assists um, but that's a poor season you got 29 last year goals slash assists so um, I think Ian Everett is the right man to you know to get him back on track get him back playing and uh, you saw with Callum Lang the other day it only takes you know a little bit of you know, magic to make a goal and 10 minutes later you're putting one in yourself and I think that as soon as Collins gets one he'll, I think Collins will go and score seven or eight between now and the end of the season and it will lead to you know, Bolton Wanderers winning this league He's that type of player. I think he's that type of player that can push you over the line. Um, Jake, sort of carrying on with with Bolton. We've been speaking before this on, on the group chat. We mentioned somebody else that isn't Aaron Collins that's joined Bolton. Celeb Taylor, mm. Cheltenham uh, on loan from West Brom last season. Yeah. He looked good. In Caleb, his, not Caleb. 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 <laughs> Caleb. Caleb. I, you know what? I think he wouldn't mind. He's that good. He wouldn't mind. He <laughs> it goes by both names. Yeah. Um, Taylor, whatever his bloody name is. Uh, yeah, he was on loan uh, <laughs> from, from West Brom at Cheltenham. And let's be honest, a pretty average Cheltenham team last season. Still good to stay up, of course. That's the expectation most seasons. But he was standing out in that side. Yeah, He joined Bolton and we talk about sides in January. You're not looking to you know, wholesale, uh, wholesale a side. You're looking at basically picking in different ingredients. They, mm. they needed a centre-back and they've gone and got one of the most in-demand centre-backs on loan. In, in Taylor, I think that's so that that does show again, similar to Collins, a statement signing again. Yeah, and if, if you can cast your mind back, boys, to the uh, the draft video that we did on Ben's channel at the back end of last season, Caleb Taylor was in my my the team that I selected. That shows you how good he was for for Cheltenham, who were really poor um, last season. Um, I thought he was excellent, and um, you know you you look at the news around Bolton that Rico Santos is, is meant to be out for a couple of weeks with a bit of an injury. And they've acted like the the, the rumor of this of Caleb Taylor going to Bolton has almost come out of nowhere. Um, to all of a sudden getting announced, he's a really clever addition. He played middle of a back three for Cheltenham, really commanding, wins his headers. And you think of that Bolton team, and you know they need they need a different type of centre back like that. Owen Toll very good on the ball. Rico Santos very dominant on the floor. You know very big. I think Caleb Taylor offers them something different, a ball playing centre back as well. I think he's really going to slot in, and, and he only adds another bow to this Bolton side, who, like you mentioned earlier, with, with Collins. Um, and I think it's it's a move that suits all parties. West Brom will go, and they'll want Bolton to play him for for the rest of the, the season, which they which you'll probably get in terms of games. It also benefits the player going back to West Brom potentially in the summer or whether West Brom want to cash in and sell him to Bolton if they make the step up to the championship. So, yeah, I think it's a move that suits all parties. And I think Bolton fans should be really excited because he was one of the best performers in that position last season in the in the whole league. Tom? I want to, uh, yeah, I want to, I mean, we come back to the Collins chat and I, I want to get Jake's thoughts on Moxon as well because I, um, well, there's obviously plenty of time this evening. Well, what, two things I want to add. Uh, one, I have a little bit of news, which is, it, it it's not exciting news. Well, it is exciting news. It's it's news nonetheless. Um, the other thing, the chat will be full of rumours tonight. We're going to do our very best here at 
TLOP HQ to verify mm. as many things as we possibly can as they come into us. Of course, there's going to be a lot happening tonight. There's going to be a lot of uh, maybe news that doesn't materialize into anything. We're going to try and be as careful as we can. We don't want to report anything that doesn't end up happening. Um, we also, because we've been there before, been there, done that, and bought the ties and the t-shirt. Um, we'll get too so- excited, Wardy, will we? We're, we're not going to no. get too excited, no. so we're uh, we're we're just going to bear with things. We're going to take it as as it comes. Um, I don't want to sound like Fabrizio Romano, but I haven't been on my phone during the day this much for quite a while. I've been looking at things and texting people and doing all sorts today. It's been it's been a really fun day. So uh, looking forward to more tonight. The other thing is I will say, Destiny Ojo has been recalled from his loan at Paul Town back to Pompey. So that won't that name won't mean much to you three boys, or you, you might know him. Um, I actually went to see him the other night with Barney and Mike at Pool Town when they played at Swindon, I believe. Yes, disgusting that Super Marine. Disgusting. Yeah, sorry, but it wasn't Swindon Town. It was the the second oh, team. Right. What Swindon. a massive piece of news that um, is. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, you I, got off, off, get off your seats, guys. Tom. Ojo come back from. <laughs> Don't go to bed. <laughs> Those numbers are just it's, the view numbers just plummet. I know the graph like, taken. I did I did soften the blow a little bit and said it yeah. wasn't. Well, talk about Saxon was... Early. He's just been confirmed to go to Wickham. About who? Yeah. Saxon Early. Do we know the name? But I know Ben will know the name. Ben, you what do you make of Saxon Early? Obviously, they've um, Harry Boys left left Wickham at the start of the window. Joined Fleetwood Town. It's not a bad replacement, Saxon Early, is he? No, no, I, I, absolutely. And I, 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 would, I literally just looked into that before he came on and apparently it, it was wanting him to be a permanent, but they managed to get him on loan and you know, they've done a couple of decent pieces of business and I think they're going to keep low as well. I think Blackpool maybe put a bit of a bid in. So, uh, you know, they're going to need as many options as they can because they've kind of gone from a three back to a four back. So, uh, yeah, a bit of a different option for him. I was going to say as well, another piece of business that's gone through and Jake spoke, Jake's joke, Jake, Jake, jokingly no, spoke I about it. I am a joke, to be fair, what's yeah. my channel is anyway. Jokingly said it. Uh, you spoke about Matty Taylor. It was a one-year anniversary, of course, of the infinite Matty Taylor moment where he got loaned out uh, to Port Vale. <laughs> so all these in-jokes are intertwining. It's amazing how they all sort of come together. Um, he's went to Forest Green in the summer after his release from Oxford United. He's now gone to Cheltenham, so he's made a step up. I believe he's done okay at Forest Green, not played loads and loads of games, uh, but he is going to Cheltenham. He's being reunited with <laughs> the ex-Port Vale manager, um, Daryl Clark, of course, who's now at Cheltenham. So that makes sense he's, you know, in terms of a player wanting to go back and reunite with the manager who he thought he'd be with for a longer period of time. He's gone back there. So the first piece of business, along with the Wickham uh, business that Jake and Nappers have just brought you, is that Matty Taylor has signed for Cheltenham. I think that's a two-and-a-half-year deal, so it's permanent. And to be fair to Matty Taylor, when he was at Oxford, it's been a little while since he scored a a large amount of goals. I think it's one of those where he is an experienced head. He knows his league extremely well. Is he going to score you 15, 20 goals? I don't think so. I think he is past that time. But he's also somebody that's going to run. He's got a great work right about him. And 33, he's still got a good engine on him as that striker. He's always been quite a pressing type up there. Um, and he can score goals. He's a finisher. So I think for Cheltenham, they needed a striker. Oxford, ironically, took their striker, Will Goodwin, earlier on in the window. They've been crying out for a striker. And the ex-Oxford man, Matty Taylor, has joined them on a two-and-a-half-year deal. So I think that one makes makes sense. But anyway, Jake, we'll go back to you on the uh, on the Wickham deal. Fantastic. Um, on the which, on the which one are we talking about now? Well, there's a few, but the, the Wickham deal that you just bring up. I've completely forgotten. Oh, Saxon name. early, yeah. Saxon early, that's the one. He was really impressive at Stevenage the year they got. I think the year they come out of League Two, got his move to to Argyle um, when they got promoted, and, and and it perhaps hasn't worked out the way he would have wanted. But um, if you think about who um, Plymouth have got a wing back, I think they've got uh, is it Barley Mumba they play at, at left back. Um, if if it's not, I, I do apologise. Um, it's a fantastic pickup for Wickham, a really dynamic forward-thinking left back who is really good with the ball at his feet. I think he's going to fit this Matt Bloomfield philosophy down to a T. Um, I think Wickham fans can be really excited about Saxon. It looks like a lot of Stevenage fans that I follow on on Twitter were very keen on on having him uh, back there, but he's ended up at, at Buckinghamshire, and I think also joined fellow Plymouth. Teammate Matt Butcher, who's gone to to Wickham today as well, which is one that we we haven't spoke about. I think he was he's been in this division before. Was, was he? At, I want to say was it Accrington Ben Plymouth last season as well. Yeah, was he at Accrington before Plymouth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so he, he he knows the level and he's coming into Wickham. I think he had a bit of experience in in the middle of midfield. Obviously, got a promotion on his CV last year as well. So Wickham the, doing there. 
couple of bits of business. The left wing back you're looking for is Mikel Miller at Plymouth. Mikel Miller. Miller. On the, on the right-hand side. Um, we have to bring it up. Deal, thank you very much indeed for that. Has he joined a Lib Dem Zoom meeting? No, you haven't. Um, very yep. funny of you. Phoenix Patterson to Pompey. We'll talk about it now so we don't have to for the rest of the night, Ben. But it's <laughs> not... Mm, you reckon? I don't think yeah. it's going to happen, personally. But go on. I, I, hope, I hope it does. Oh. For... I hope it does. Do we... you? Yeah, like he's not going to stay next season, so we might as well get a, a better fee now. So mm, for me, that. good luck. I was going to say, Dylan, you're the reason why we said we're going to make sure we filter the comments because he just put they're confirmed, guys. It's not confirmed, okay. Dylan. Please, <laughs> we're not. You're not going to listen to me. But the reason why we said we're going to make sure we verify it is because of people like Dylan. Um, we do know Dylan, and we know exactly what he's like. So there is a that's an example of what we we're not going to broadcast. Yes. Had to because he paid some money, and I don't know why he's done that because he already pays for his T Lot membership. Dylan. Which he's Dylan. Nice that's him. why he's done I know, that. I know he does. Uh, nice to see Jordan with a big up the T Lot. Thank you very much indeed for that. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, Northampton transfer news, gentlemen. Anything that we can provide Alessio uh, Sula with? Well, they've only signed tw- two this window, haven't they? Um, but they've kept hold of important loanees, which is important they have, as well. They have, but they've so they've, they've signed. Um, Tony Springett, who was, if you can remember, he was at, at Derby last year, I think, on the, for the second half of the season. And they brought in Louis Molden from Wolves, who was at Rochdale at the start of the season. I yeah, think. he's the goal. They lost the goalkeeper, goalkeeper. I believe. And yeah, Matt Thompson went back to Newcastle. Um, yeah, exactly. I don't think they've been linked with anyone. I haven't seen anything on socials today. But do Northampton really need anything? You know, the, the moment... Saying- Northampton are quite bizarre. And again, we'll come to, to Tom. I said this on the phone earlier. And similar to Lincoln, I'll be honest. I'll be, I'll be open and honest now you're still here, Jake. I'll say it to your face. It's, I find it really strange. Not strange. Not strange, actually. I, I know why it happens. But it seems like Northampton and, and Lincoln, let's be honest, this league is a really, really weird place at the moment in terms of, we've always been saying these sort of mini league tables within them. You've either, I think you've either got to go mental and, and try and go very, very ambitious to push up there or you sort of just go, right, we can stabilise where we are um, and mm. then, you know, sort of build on ahead of next season. I know in January that sounds crazy, but with Northampton, let's be honest, and, and I could be proven wrong. And if I am, this will be clipped back at me. I don't think Northampton are at the point where they're thinking about the top six yet. Or maybe mm. they're thinking about it. I don't think they're going to get there. So you're looking at sort of recruiting in a different way. Most importantly for Northampton is, this season was staying up and they've been brilliant at doing that. I've been so impressed by Northampton and they've kept hold of, of, of their talents they needed needed to keep hold of. Um, so in terms of Northampton and their transfers, I don't think they've needed to bring in anyone because they've been so, so good. Unless you're going to maybe not break the bank, but be extra ambitious with your recruitment. It's sort of a weird league table place to be in right now because there is still that gap to the top six. I don't know. Top, like I said, I said it to you, Tom, it's similar to Lincoln, it's similar to a few teams and we were almost there. I, I think Oxford was sort of similar that last season where it's like, yeah, we're getting all these lone players in, but like, what are we really pushing for? It's sort mm-hmm. of like a really, yeah. like, and again, another point to bring you is Pompey signing players to stay in this top six, top two race. Teams down the bottom, Fleetwood are bringing in players to stay up. There's a real weird gap in the middle where you're like, we're probably safe where we are. How do we approach the window? I think regarding Northampton and obviously part of my preparation for this weekend is I've taken quite a, an in-depth look at, at what Northampton have been doing for the last couple of weeks and months. And they've beaten Peterborough, Oxford and Blackpool already this season. Right. So that's the, you know, that's a, a team that is not overachieving because I don't think that's fair on Northampton. That is a team that are doing extremely well at this level for the first season back in League One for a little while. And you talk about a giant transfer window, don't you? And you talk about all the various additions that clubs are making. You've mentioned a, a top six, top two race there. Um, but I think Northampton are doing just fine. And there's nothing that screams to me that that makes me think, well, if they don't add any additions between now and 11 o'clock this evening or tonight, then I don't feel like that that's going to be catastrophic for their hopes for the remainder of this season. I, I think they're they're absolutely fine where they are. Look, they aren't going to break into the top, top six. So I'll, I'll say it with a little bit more chest than you did just then, Jack, that, that, that they're I'm not. Scarred. And... I'm scarred. I'm scarred of previous years. I've said things and come back to bite me. <laughs> I know, but I, I don't, I just, not for the fault of Northampton. I don't think they will due to the competition that's around them. That's not me questioning any longevity from Northampton. I think they're doing an absolutely fantastic job. They cleared up at the... December end of the month League One awards that we'll all remember quite um, quite vividly actually. So it was very long ago that they won both the manager and the player of the month for that month. And that was a month where they lost 3-0 to Pompey at home. But they 
had to get in that that in there, didn't I? Um, they. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just staring down at my phone. I'm going to read that in a moment. The yeah, the the Northampton thing. I, I what I'm trying to the point I'm trying to make is that I don't think the window will be completely won or lost with in with regards to them for the rest of the season. Um, I do want to get to a few of the comments because I've missed a couple. The chat is going like the absolute clappers tonight. So thank you very much to all of you for getting involved. Um, we're nearly 400 strong across YouTube, Facebook, both Crazy. ends of the spectrum. So thank you so much for being with us. We all very much do appreciate it. Myself, Nappers, Jack and Jake are with you for the duration this evening. And we're here till 11 o'clock. Apologies for the timestamps all the time. We're half an hour into tonight's uh, TLOP edition of transfer deadline day thank you all so much for joining us but make sure you do leave a like on the stream as well it really does appreciate we really do appreciate it and it really does help the channel out and it means that if you like the stream there's a very good chance of more people finding us on their youtube pages while they're looking around for transfer deadline day streams they come and join the party so that's what we want to do um we uh, there was a comment on here ben i wanted you to see where's it gone that's gone past uh yes did you hear your shout out on the three lads in the pub podcast i, I need to get round to listening so i did get told i will get i will in the next couple of days get round to listening but uh, thank you if, if, well they they love you mate they absolutely love you um and your mum loves you as well as i love your mum she says how dapper we're looking thank you very much for that jill hope she's watching in the other room uh, scott said up the freaking t-lop jack did you want to oh was that a wave to jill well, no, it can be hi, how jill. Are you doing, jill? hi jill um yeah, there's a few comments coming in at the moment about oxford's tweet they just put out oh, yeah what? a bit weird a bit weird uh admin is strapped in clock lock emoji would <laughs> but then you sort of go, okay, uh, what should the takeaway of choice be? Charles Charles Italian. Vote Italian. Italian. Uh, I think, I don't know, but that would be a little bit stupid if we put that out and we didn't sign someone. The admin would have, off the main account, that would look a little bit bizarre. I, I'm getting the idea that the deal is done. They're just going to announce it basically where they want, when they want, sorry. Because... You know, is that, that got something to do with the nationality, na la 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 nationality no, of the incoming? Because he's English, so I guess other. I oh, we know, know who he is, do we? Uh, yeah, I think I think I do know who he is. Yeah, um, big, man, big man Jack Ward, of course. Get he knows. Exclusive in the title. Get exclusive <laughs> in the title of this. I'll say I think because not it's public knowledge. I think it's Harry Leonard, uh, who's a uh, Blackburn. He's a twenty-year-old striker. Like I said, I don't quite know what that tweet means. It could be completely non-related however i think it is related in the sense that if you tweet that out from the main account that means there is still work to be done i think if they're not going to do any business that would be rather stupid thoughts boys am i reading into that too much there is a no, clock emoji there no they're absolutely going to announce something in a minute yeah yeah they are absolutely i just wonder why the takeaway thing that has to be some kind of maybe they're watching and we should all they're telling us to order a pizza what ben gets a chinese you get an italian i get an indian and jack is other please specify yeah yeah, Should we talk I... about the, the Fleetwood signing? Because obviously Fleetwood have, have, yeah. have had well, some big why, why moves come out today. about the, the alarm clock things? What What's all that about? Clever, well, by the way. Very clever. Well, well, they're, well, they're really late on one already. <laughs> half an hour late. So. They <laughs> snoozed start, it now because they've snoozed it. They pressed snooze. <laughs> yeah. A bit well, like me line. getting up for uni at the minute. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> nope. I think I missed today's lecture. Um, <laughs> what about the no. lads from Ireland, Ben? Uh, is it... Flam uh, Lonigan, right? Yeah, Tommy Lonigan. Yeah. Well, there's a bit of a story about that. So he, Fleetwood uh, Fleetwood haven't signed him for Fleetwood. So oh, the story behind Waterford. it is Waterford wanted him, right? right? Their new season couldn't sign him. He has a release clause in his contract of sixty thousand pounds. I think Josh Hill went for fifty, sixty thousand pounds. So ah. Fleetwood have bought him. I think we'll use him till the end of the season, and then we'll get loaned out to Watford. I don't think we can go on loan because it. it I don't. It's something about he can't go on loan again to Ireland this for like till August, you know, for some weird reason. Mm -hmm. And then um, he will um, go to Watford. So I think that's a. Uh, it's not a fleet we're signing, and the the three or four whatever are coming in aren't going to be permanent signings. I don't think. I think they're going to be loan signings, and uh, yeah, it looks like the club have, have accepted. You know, it's fate. Whatever will be, will be. Two big departures today at Fleetwood. Good. Josh Earl, like you mentioned, and then Jack Marriott this morning yep. going to, to wreck them. Good. Uh, exactly what I wanted to see. A um, couple more would have been nice, if I'm honest with you. Uh, Marriott didn't want to be here. I've said that numerous times. If you're paying someone five, six thousand pounds a week at Fleetwood in League One, it's ludicrous. And for me, we've got a fee for him. Josh Earl, slightly gutted about, but 
for, for his sake of his career. He's 25, 26 now. Never let Fleetwood down in terms of professionalism, you know, effort, you know, didn't really make too many mistakes. He wasn't great at sometimes. Um, gutted about that, but he's gone to Barnsley for a three and a half year deal in League One, chance of promotion. It's a good move for him. We've got peanut, we've got a little bit of a feedback for him, so we won't lose money. Um, Vela last week, absolutely delighted, if I'm honest with you. Um, the reset is happening and it's happening now. I, I just don't understand that why we got rid of Lee Johnson if the only Rooney probably would have gone extra, maybe Lynch, to this. So I, I kind of think we're well, keeping Lee Johnson then. You, you don't lose anything, but it turns out the club you know, thought differently. Can I uh, say a massive welcome to Retro Shirt Sean, who says, Nappers look slick. Tom, you're going to have to up your game. Thank you very much for that, Retro. Much appreciated. Uh, Lee says, good evening, boys. Sorry I'm late. Was catching up on the Traitors. Any of us Traitors fans? I haven't, but I've heard it's, I've heard it's good. It's it all is. over the place, isn't it? Traitors. The Apprentice is on tonight as well, which I'm very excited so about. So's the darts. Nappers is missing the darts. Uh, There's some yeah. Premier League football tonight as well. It's all going on, isn't it? We've, There's no place game. Nappers would rather be than here on a T-Lop transfer deadline stream. Surely not. Although the darts is very close to his heart, I know. And also, if a cheeky plug, if you haven't gone and followed Nappers' TikTok where he does his about darts that. content, that needs doing. Um, another cheeky plug is, as um, Ben put in the chat just quite a few minutes ago now, we do have a Patreon, which is T-Lop related. There is, I'm hoping, going to be some time for the four of us to record a T-Lop Extra, which I'm sure we'll probably... I mean, we could review January, couldn't we? I know we're all going to do that on sort of separate mediums, but that'd be a, a good opportunity. We do want to talk ownership, head coach, um, director of football models and how that's kind of progressing in League One at the minute. And then maybe just in any other business where we uh, we take some questions and, and we have a bit of a catch up in a more relaxed fashion. Not that TLOP's not relaxed, um, but that's available on TLOP Extra. So patreon.com forward slash that League One podcast is the place to go. Uh, super fan and queen of TLOP, Sue said, you're all looking very handsome tonight. Proud of my boys. Thank you very much. Indeed. I was going to say, <laughs> just to let you know, we might, we should have mentioned this. and We're presuming you know. We do have a podcast. Uh, like, oh, everyone this is, knows that, don't they? <laughs> we, are, we are, this, you know, th we do do the, the podcast. This isn't just, you know, sign up for our Patreon to watch this again. Uh, no. This is uh, this is a Patreon that we do um, as a added bonus to the to the content that we put on on spotify on audio platforms every single week so yeah we thought this time we've done me and tom have done this jake was on it this is the second one that nappers did the summer one i think as well um but we decided this time you know we've t-lop we've been loving it you know and the people have, have taken it on board to the point where we didn't quite know exactly which direction it was going to go into but we've been blown away by the the lovely support we've had on that podcast so we decided that for this deadline day we expect a busy one who would we rather spend it with? So yeah, we're we're having a good, a good, <laughs> dare I say it, two and a half hours uh, to go, which is going to be great fun. Um, I just were uh, loving the the comments on the takeaway. Sorry to bring it back to you. Uh, there was an Indian selection. People are sort of saying, could it be <laughs> a, a, an Indian takeaway? Wally, that one. Which one? Sorry, I clicked, oh. I clicked on the wrong one. We'll come back to that in a minute. <laughs> okay. And yes, Pepe I think is coming. Potentially, potentially, Pepe. We'll, we'll keep it open. Um. Yeah, I was going to say, the, uh, is it any... open? That's a terrible thing to say with regard <laughs> to that kind of question. Yeah, maybe that isn't. We'll like, bear it in mind. mind. We'll bear it yeah. in mind. Get your minds out of the gutter. Yes, yeah, so, yeah uh, someone's just put, we are, I think the, it, amongst the fans, and I'm one of them, I think we are looking at a midfielder. Um, and people are sort of putting two and two in together and sort of saying that it could be an Indian player because India was one of the selections. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't think that's the case. I would love a midfielder. I think it is only going to be one. I think the admin are just sort of stay, saying, you know, don't go to bed, essentially. We are ready to you announce something. steal that from Andrew Neov Munzano, can you? Did he? I don't think he did invent the entire don't go to... So he, he's the... He it's didn't kind invent of, the whole thing. No, he didn't start. He didn't in in sort of invent the whole thing. Uh, Samuel, we we will chat about that in just a moment. I I don't have very much news. We have a little bit of what we can go on. Um, I was going to say this to you earlier on. I'm assuming, um, Jamie and and the gang are, are going to have to wait. Um, until the I um, know there's a Nappers video coming out. I'm sure there's a Jack Ward Football Podcast video coming out on uh, January predictions. And if Jake can be bothered to turn his camera on, then uh, there might be one from him as well. I might think about doing something similar. Um, what were we talking about then? Um, what were we talking about then? Oh, I wanted to say um, there's a couple of questions coming in saying what happens to T Lop if teams leave. Jordan and, and Dan are asking a similar thing. We have discussed the possibility of a T flop, which would be that football league podcast. If there are to be any um, ups and downs in terms of the uh, 
yeah, the the league in in well wherever we end up being next season in terms of the league. So uh, yes, and uh, Sue has given us a rather lovely review there of the absolute best, funniest, informative, informative, informative podcast out there. Boys, I don't know about you, but that should go on the like the slogan where, that people see when they click on it. <laughs> user verified <laughs> user review best funniest informative podcast out there fantastic uh t flop does have a ring to it so that's all good ben you must be blown away by the support we've had since we started the the podcast it's been amazing isn't it yeah considering how it started i think that we just had a call about you know doing a, a league one draft video and then i said oh and then you know it was you who mentioned the podcast and i thought oh, it'll, ne it'll never happen i've had these talks before <laughs> and then we we sat down i think one friday afternoon and said it was going to happen you know we'll do graphics and a week later we sat down recording all like, the intros to it all and and obviously <clears throat> Well, are we now 21, 22 episodes in? We've done six or seven, you know, extras. Yeah, I think I think we've done, you know, a Christmas special, which was good as well. And we've got probably the best part of the podcast to come in the, the last 15 episodes of the year left as well with the playoffs and you know, the running uh, as well. It, it's been remarkable. And you see the numbers and, you know, there's never really been a drop off in terms of numbers. It's got better and better every week. And, you know, I'm having kind of, I remember when we didn't, I think we didn't, up, didn't upload for two weeks and people were getting aggressive with it, like, fucking <laughs> upload and do this, do this. And I'm like, whoa, calm down. And it, and it was like, it was like, come on, get your finger out. And and um, no, it, I just love how much, you know, people like, and it's like when they come up to you and going, I like it. I like, I like the bits where you're not talking football. And, you know, I think that, that says a lot. So, um, yeah. It's one of those, I think, where you'd start it and you go, we're going to put this out there. Nobody will listen, but they might enjoy it every now and again. But it seems that we've got quite a loyal audience and, and that's lovely. You know, that was never, we didn't expect it. I know people say it for the sake of it and we didn't know how good it, we genuinely didn't, you know, we, let's be honest. I think we've done, we did one video prior to this all together. Like it, it wasn't something that we'd done loads and loads of and we knew it was a format was going to work it was one of those where we all knew that we got on as a, as a group of friends and it was like well we have these conversations over over a phone why don't we talk about it colleagues. And put it out for people to exactly we've gone from friends to colleagues and we sort of sometimes stay as friends it depends uh you know it's one of those things i've seen someone say um <laughs> it was quite a funny comment i don't know if you boys saw it he was me thinking that t-lop stood for town lincoln oxford and pompey we didn't even think of that but that's a very very interesting <laughs> comment i did that is amazing um snoop john that's uh, that was John. Jake, how much have you enjoyed T Lop since you started, mate? Well, it's made me relevant, mate. So I've bloody loved it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, no, no, look, it's been good. I think I think I'll speak for all of us that when we when we announced it, when we first did the original tweet that we were making a podcast, I literally couldn't use my phone because it was like blowing up the likes and all the Instagram and all the Twitter notifications, but. Yeah, I, I I think as a as a as a foursome, we work really well. We're all really good friends. We we uh, we all share similar sort of views about football. I think it makes for a good po po podcast. And we're all obviously still young, aren't we, boys? We're all still young. Um, yeah, another, young some are young. Yeah. Some we're of all, us are nearly in our thirties, aren't yeah, we? All right. No, not nearly. We're not. We're not far away. But. Um, yeah, no, I, I look. I, I enjoy talking about football as much as you boys do, and to sit down and talk about you know League One with three of your best mates is is, is a privilege, and to, for it to make me relevant, it's even better. So, um, yes, no, thoroughly thoroughly enjoy doing T Lop. It's the highlight of my uh, of my weekend, along with Ben's late League One live show, which I've now left, obviously, and been replaced by Sue. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, no, it's good, mate. It is good. Um, Can also, also, I know we were. There was there was a supporter asking if there was any going to be any Northampton transfer rumours uh, today. They have since tweeted out that they have closed for business. They've done everything they wanted, so there'll be nothing in at Northampton. Uh, there mean? was a uh, a question for you actually, Wardy, that I saw that made me tickle. Made me tickle. Oh dear, Ooh, sorry about that. We are live, so can't edit that bit out. <laughs> um, there is a very good point that Andy Moon has been very quiet. So hopefully that things uh, things do speed up a little bit. But we're we're still waiting on uh, on one thing that I'm uh, I'm hoping is going to come through. Where was it? It was from a guy called John. Where's it? Oh, it's David. Um, have you got the Oxford <laughs> Y fronts on as well? So thank you for that, David. We're um, he hasn't. There we go. That's good. We don't don't need to know anymore. That's absolutely fine. 
Uh, Joseph set up the tea flop as well. So uh, here we go. Hopefully, Can I uh, come to uh, to Nappers and ask him a question about a certain Jay Matete? Uh, somebody who Oxford are linked with. I don't <clears throat> really. I, I think we are going to sign Harry Leonard, the striker. The second name, if we are, we've been, t- we've been s- told one, definitely. But the Jay Matete thing is lurking and has definitely been heating up in the last couple of days. I personally, there's a, a certain account that I'm not going to say what it is, but but I'll be honest, I'm an honest person a lot of the time. They're saying that we're in talks for him. Don't believe that. I genuinely don't think we are. And if we are, it's definitely not as advanced as what this person is saying. I think he is probably on Oxford's list. I think Jay Matete is on the list of most League One clubs. He's a very, very good player at this level. But Nap, as you've seen uh, Jay Matete in the flesh, he came through not, was it your academy? He was there before mm. Sunderland. It was your academy, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, um, thoughts on Jay Matete? Yeah, um, he'll do well at Oxford. You know, it'll suit him. He, he, he's one of the players that likes getting on the ball on the half shoulder, you know, moving with it, passing it. He won't go and make you a a 30, 40, 50 yard pass, you know, every week or, you know, regularly. But what he will do, he'll, he's a bit of a tippy tappy type of player that good on his feet, very light footed, quite quick, agile, good in a tackle, can get you off your seat as well, can drive you forward, box to box. And I think it showed when he went into Sunderland at the end of the season when he was a squad player. I know he came on at Wembley and, he, you know, I thought he did well. And then I found it difficult to get into the Sunderland team. I thought, I think he actually signed on the same day as uh, Jermaine Defoe as well, you know, on deadline day two years ago. And um, we got a nice fee alongside, you know, the likes of James Hill and Billy Crell in that window as well. And, and then um, went to Plymouth last year, did really well. I thought, you know, boss that midfield from January onwards and added something that we didn't have already. And I think for Oxford, a side that like having the ball, that like being adventurous, that like seeing the other half of the pitch as well, that like, you know, you know, assaulting the other box as well and, and getting getting the ball forward with purpose. I think it, it'll be a, a brilliant signing, but I think, it, you know, I'm very surprised that he's not left Sunderland already on a loan deal. That If I was a, a Bolton Oxford, even a Portsmouth, as soon as Robertson left, I got asked who would have replaced him. I went, Jay Matete, not just because I knew him, I thought he would be a perfect replacement. Luckily, you've gone and got, you know, uh, an equally as good player, if not better. But Jay Matetti is a player. He, he doesn't score many goals, but um, you know, does, the, uh, does the basics very well. Yeah, we're, we're sort of looking at that type of different midfielder profile. You know, we've got Brannigan, we've got McEachern, and we've got McGuain. But somebody else to sort of step up would be nice. Like I said, I, I, I'll be honest if I say predict yes or no, and I, I promise I don't know anything other than what the, the, the Twitter and social media is is saying. I personally don't think we'll do it. I think we'll sign the striker. I think that'll be it. But if we can get that done maybe later on, you don't quite know how the low market works. I think somebody said earlier, the, the January market is is like a domino effect. Teams are going to let players go when they get players in, right? So yeah. we're going to look at Jay Matete, maybe not at, at 10 to 9, but at 11 o'clock, it might be one that happens right at the end. However, Oxford do tend to sort of tell their local newspaper quite a bit. They tend to sort of say if there's going to be one and if their understanding is it's going to be one more, it probably will be. Um, but who knows? Tom, you're going to sort of come in there. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, just wanted to get through some of what our wonderful live chat have been saying tonight. Uh, Phil said, T-flop, yeah, like it. Whatever happens, teams go up and down. Hope you boys keep going. Phil, don't you worry. No plans to not keep going whatsoever. We'll all be uh, here, ready and rolling for the next season. Uh, I'm in bed with a bat flu. Oh, Phil, all Mike right. doze off. Shout loud if any more popping news. Phil, keep us on for as long as you can. Uh, we'll give you as much as we possibly can on that. Uh, still hoping for at least maybe one this evening. Uh, Adam said, happy deadline day. The absolute legend that is Adam Poirier said, happy deadline day, lads. Uh, Pepe has a question for Wardy. Will there be any news on an incoming fourth stand of the Kassam? <laughs> Didn't really enjoy my view of the Hollywood Bowl on Tuesday. There is actually a picture that demonstrates that. You are moving houses, though, aren't you? You're uh, you're moving properties. Hopefully, yeah. It looks as it's gone quite quiet. But if you've been part of a stadium move or been part of a big move like before, it's not you know it's not like buying a house, and even that's quite complicated. It's not you know for sale. You know, sort the details out, and within a few months, start talking about furniture. There is a bit more to do when it comes to a stadium, especially when you're building one from scratch and knocking one down. Um, so yeah, it's it's one that will hopefully get done ahead of the 25 26 season or the 26 27. I think it's the second one actually. Um, 
it's not long, really. That sounds like a long time away, but it's not. We're in the 23-24 season already, so there's a lot still to do in a short amount of time. It's something that, yeah, it's not like January where it's a last-minute deal, stadium moves. They uh, tend to take quite a while. And uh, Napa's you're laughing. I think it's because of what Jake put in the chat. Uh, I joked and said they snoozed. Uh, they have snoozed. Fleetwood have pressed snooze on their alarm. Yeah, um, I think it's going to be one of three or four. Uh, I think it's going to either be um, Finley Potter. Uh, and, and I'm going to say Potter. It's not Brian Potter. It's Finley Potter. So, uh, uh, Or Elijah Campbell, I think, has been mentioned to me as well from Everton. There's a lad from Burnley. I'm not, I can't really remember his name, but he, he, he's, he's been mentioned. And then there's obviously okay. Kilkenny, but there was always mentioned that he would be on the bench for Bournemouth tonight, which he is. And then he'd be announced at 10 o'clock, which I think that could be maybe one of the reasons if snooze. I don't, I don't, don't have a clue. So, uh, yeah, I think we'll find out at nine minutes past. Fleet would always like tweeting on the hour. So, um, yeah, we're yeah. expecting another one in at Cheltenham in the next nine minutes as well. Um, not League One related, but Jesse Lingard's going to South Korea. Just thought I'd, um, <laughs> I'll throw what? That in there. Jesse Lingard yeah. moving to South Korea. Um, this one very much is League One related. Uh, I think that is it for Pompey business at this transfer window. We are led to believe that the uh, the door is shut in terms of incomings um, and there are no more tonight. Well, it's a little bit of a shame. No, 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 stack it off no, then, Tom. No, no, we'll, yeah. we'll bother. I don't know if they're in the... Are they in the top six race? I don't know. <laughs> little, little, well... It, it's been the best window for years and years and years. Let's let's make no Has bones it? about it. Yeah. Has anyone seen the John Terry tweet, by the way? Or Instagram post? He's, he's basically just put up something saying, so you know that the light switches when you turn it on, it's red. He, he goes, yeah. he has to switch him off every day that he's in the building because he, he doesn't want red in the Chelsea building because he hates Arsenal that much. What are you on about? Just go on John Terry's Instagram and you'll know why you do that, Tom. Carry carry on your point, and then we'll go back on that. Yes, I do want to talk about um, that because that sounds quite interesting, actually. And I didn't quite understand it the first time, so we'll come back to it. Yeah, no, it it comes uh, from Neil Allen, who's one of the um, head sport writers at the Ports of News, which is a bit of a shame, really. Um, It's an incredibly trustworthy source, and yeah, I mean that's that is that is disappointing. Yes, it's been the it's been the best January transfer window in living memory for quite a lot of Pompey fans, I would say. Uh, maybe window is is a little bit of a push, although in terms of um, particularly the last week or so, it's been absolutely fantastic. And I was saying coming into this tonight that if and I'll say this again and again for the next couple of hours, but if that is to be it, which we're led to believe it is, I mean, you never know. It's January, isn't it? So the, there's still a, a couple of hours to go. Um, and if if Neil's saying that, then Neil's saying that. But they're you know they they very much said at, at the start of the transfer window that they wouldn't be sort of they'd still be sitting around just in case there are any more bits and pieces that that do crop up in the in the last dying couple of hours so uh yeah but as as transfer windows go we've got plenty of time to reflect on it for the next couple of hours um, and i'm sure we'll get some thoughts from people as well um is that it's been absolutely fantastic um and uh yeah i'm i'm delighted to say that Yes, we have come out, and I tweeted about this earlier on. Pompey have come out of the window a better side than they were going into it, which is absolutely what we wanted to achieve, and that's what they promised, um, and that's what we have done. So, as Justin said, top quality, and it was a great effort, and uh, yeah, I really think we've given ourselves a really good chance. I agree. I think we can all agree. I don't think you have to be Pompey fans to know that the window has been aggressive, That you know, in, in a sense that you've, you've gone out and got your targets. I was quite, I wasn't agreeing with the Pompey fans. It, it was when Messino was sort of saying, we're not missing out on targets and they didn't quite believe him. And they were like, oh, you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. Deals like Moxon that is contracted by a club and you want to buy him, they take time. Des Buckingham did an interview uh, and he said, transfers, permanent transfers are even harder than loans to do in January because teams want to create a bidding war and they want to they know later on in the window teams will pay more they were not going to sell our mox on on the 3rd of January that is never going to happen because they know but Harris wouldn't have happened either yeah exactly and we don't didn't know the situation of, of Robertson at that point I don't think uh you've got uh who else have you signed a permanent deal Callum that Lang, is a scheduled again. break for Ben by the way just, he hasn't just had enough yeah. of us an upstick to <laughs> tell us beforehand that he was shooting off for a minute 
you, you've got teams there that when, if you're looking at buying players, you've got to make sure that you do it the right time. And for Pompey as well, you know, ideally you get four players in a permanent, on a permanent deal by the 5th of January. But unfortunately, teams aren't going to operate like that. Mm-hmm. I think this is a selling market. I think we've seen a selling market. Pompey have done great in that market because they've been, they've been able to buy. But there haven't been a lot of teams that have been able to be that aggressive. And, and we've seen that. Although I, having said that, I think most of the League One teams actually have strengthened. There's not many teams other than, I'd say, Reading that have got dramatically worse over the window. So I think Pompey have done a great job and it is definitely a seller's market and Pompey have come through that with some great additions. Um, have they won the window, live... Jack? Well, I'm not going to tell you that because the video coming out tomorrow. Um... <laughs> I'll be All honest. Right. That's it. That's that one's that happened. then. Yep, go on, crack on. Also, leave it, but we've got uh, 398 across two channels. Whether you're watching on my channel Crikey. or Tom's channel, please make sure you leave a like because, you know, theoretically, I believe the, the split is... Not so much even, but it's uh, to a point where we can both get over 100 likes. If you're if you'll leave a like, that'd be amazing. So if you could do that, that'd be uh, much appreciated. And the live piece of news that I was going to bring you before we move back over to wherever else this conversation goes. We haven't either. chatted about Derby in the first hour, which is we haven't. So and we, we definitely should do should that. Do that. Um, Kane Edwards is joining Leighton Orient on loan. He's somebody that I put forward in my video, which was one transfer that every League One club should sign. I believe I said Burton, but Tom Kane Edwards was linked to. Is this right? Maybe he wasn't. Was no, he wasn't. Was he linked to Pompey at one point? I might be thinking of somebody else. I think of Harvey Blair, not this one. Uh, wrong Blair. <laughs> Similar attacker. Ones at Liverpool. Ones at Arsenal. Forget that. But Kane Edwards is joining or set to join Leighton Orient on loan. I put him forward. Really, really highly rated at Arsenal and Leighton mm-hmm. Orient geographically London based. They picking up some really good players. Fulham early on. They saw a player from Fulham. O'Neill. Looking at Ollie O'Neill. O'Neill. Some highly player. rated. We're talking about players in this London market and later yeah. on are picking up some great deals within that. So one to watch out for, not official. It's from uh, Peter Rourke. Well, we could put his name out there. He's a very reliable source for transfers. That's what he's saying. And we'll say that because we're not making it up. And while Cod's vlogs is on his break, Elijah, who you mentioned before he went, looks to be the player that they're bringing in. That's what Philippe is saying. Carlisle as well, Wardy, about to announce somebody or some sort of deal by the looks of it at, at it 9 o'clock like as well. well. They yeah. just tweeted the the eyes emoji and the pen emoji, which normally means, Nappers, who's, who's this Spot coming in there? your wishes, our command. Well, what's happening? I've, 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 Elijah. Like Elijah Fleetwood, they've tweeted, with a bit of a smirk. It's not fucking Elijah Campbell. Elijah Campbell, I thought. Yeah, that'd be the one. There were not many Elijahs knocking about, is there at the moment? Elijah, what, Elijah had a big, had a big. You know, oh, don't start that. The Elijah, one that's at Luton. Yeah, yeah. Elijah, I think that was on Fleetwood's list, to be honest. Yeah, he's got a hat to the Premier League last night, so I don't think he'll be coming to to Fleetwood. Elijah, I'm trying to desperately find. Ah, uh, Bell, maybe Fleet. Eat. Oh no, I don't know. We just go for Elijahs on transfer market. Elijah, <laughs> can't be many. I remember watching a catfish episode. There was a bloke called Elijah on that, but I don't think it'll be him. David, we are here till eleven, sir. So do not worry. There will oh, be more. We'll be here till about... after eleven. Are oh, we not? Just we to... probably we, really? we always go. We always go, <laughs> yeah. We always do do like five ten minutes over. But um, tricky tone. Everton left back Elijah is that's the one that we're talking about. Tone is an absolute legend, by the way. I yes. met him a couple of weeks ago when we went Tony to Fleetwood. He, he, if you don't know who Tricky Tone is, he is. The Cod's Vlogs director and executive producer. If you Probably think well, ben... no, he doesn't do away games, does he? So... No, he doesn't. No, <laughs> but he he is absolutely fabulous. Um, and Ben is obviously the the magician in front of the camera, but Tony's very much the magician behind mm. it. So, uh, yeah, he's looking a, he's forward a to seeing man. you next week, Tony. Very much looking forward to. It. Uh, it is just approaching nine o'clock. Good evening. Welcome along to Transfer Deadline Day Live. Myself, Ben, Jack and Jake are here for you for the next two hours. We are already just under a third of the way through tonight's show. Uh, what we should say is probably the most major news related to uh, ourselves in terms of everyone in this group um, on your screen tonight is that Pompey's window is pretty much shut. Matt Macy, Miles Pitt, Harris, Callum Lang, Tom McIntyre, Owen Moxon complete the fabulous five of incomings. And we will chat about that later on. Um, I'm sure we'll we'll get some time to reflect on on the window as a whole. Um, but Derby, I think, is probably a a place to to go next. Um, it's Jake. It's certainly something that's kind of picked up the pace, particularly in the last week or so, as most of the windows have. Um, maybe we should start with uh, the the first incoming of the window, who we we knew pretty much was happening from slightly before it was announced. But Corey Blackett Taylor to Pride Park. Yeah, structured really strange, isn't it? Because he's on loan, but he can play mm. against Charlton. 
but there's a loan fee of 350k floating about. So they might as well have just bought him. But clearly, I think it's to do with, with FFP, but still a very, very good piece of business. Corey Blackett Taylor has probably been one of the most consistent wide players in this division for two, three years now. Since coming in from Tranmere, I think he's really adapted to the level. And, you know, there's been many times that he's threatened, you know, teams. I can, I remember you having private conversations with you, Tom, about, um, oh, Georgie Kelly's just gone to Carlisle for an undisclosed fee. That's a very good sign. Wow. Um, that yeah. is a very good sign. That's throwing me off a little bit. That's how good that is. Um, yeah, but still, Corey Blackett Taylor, very good signing. I think he's terrorised Portsmouth a couple of times at Fratton Park, or Charlton tend yeah, to do most years anyway. And then also the the, the moves that were made yesterday, uh, Ebu Adams coming in on loan from Cardiff. I think that's a really, really clever signing, an experienced midfielder. If you can remember, and I know you guys don't might not have looked at League Two in so much detail, but the year Forrest Green walked away with the League Two title, Ebu Adams was the standout player, the the, the real um jewel in that crown and, and he's he's moved there played in that team alongside Kane Wilson who's also now at, at Derby but a really good holding midfielder he got his move to Cardiff didn't work out from like he would have done at Cardiff but a fantastic uh physical midfielder similar to the the build of Paul Pogba in terms of he's big he's physical he's quite dangly he's gets around the pitch really well maybe Pogba didn't do that as much at United but again really fantastic however my only concern about the Derby window is Tom that they're leaving themselves a little bit light up front, I think. They they, they did the tweet earlier um, about Connor Washington being back. And I have actually just been speaking to my mate, Boz, who's a, a big Derby fan. He thinks they're leaving themselves extremely light up front with, with Washington and and uh, James Collins. Um, I think they've been linked with Michael Smith or Window from Wednesday. I think that would have been a great deal for them to get over the line. But, you know, as we're getting into, what, two hours of the window left... That's looking more unlikely as as the time clocks on, but um, yeah, Derby really impressive. But I still think they they do have a little bit of work to do, whether they do it or not. We'll have to wait and see. Wardy, Derby's window, yeah, impressive. I, I think, yeah, Jake's right. I think the reason was because they 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 haven't been quite safe in this window because of they're still financially restricted uh, based on the issues, of course, they've had in in the last few years so that that deal is, is still a very very clever one it's weird but i think it's very very clever they've been able to get somebody who would have been open to a very very big market Craig blackett taylor when available on a free transfer they're getting him in now and obviously that 350k means that he signs permanently at the end of it it's basically an obligation to buy so yeah very very good abu adams is great uh jake mentioned the striker like you say michael smith lee gregory i think is still lurking around yeah uh, but there's apparently a, a bit of an issue with sheffield wednesday demanding too much from that which is weird because i don't think lee gregory's playing much football at hillsborough so i don't quite know why they're being so difficult with that one Maybe it's a case of, of Derby don't want to play, don't want to pay a certain amount of a, a loan fee or, or a wage structure. We don't know. We won't find those details out. But that is something that's, that's up there. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> that is... That is, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. that is what it's like, isn't it? A little bit. Now you've said that. Machine, <laughs> <Rob>. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. No, no McFlurries tonight. Sorry, everyone. We do look like Not a doing... large meal, sir, or a medium. <laughs> We look like we're doing deadline day from the local McDonald's, which, you know, to be honest, you know, I, I wish we were. I'd be less. less I am hungry. starving, to be fair. <laughs> can, yeah. can we get Napras's thoughts on Derby's window? Because I, I know sure. you always furnish an interesting point of view. Smart, unique. They needed pace. I know they've got, obviously, Mendes Lang, you know, and interesting. I think they started Mendes Lang, Barkusen and Blackett Taylor all together the other day, didn't they? And Barkusen has got better this season. Uh, for one reason or another, or is it me just calling him crap on a video <laughs> message for someone's birthday? Um, no, um, he can get goals, he can get assists on Barcusen, but they've done smart business, added experience in key areas as well. And I really think that Derby in a position now to go and challenge, um, you know, to to go and you know win this division or get a win promotion at the absolute minimum. I think they'd have taken the position that they're in. 
but the Derby County and they should be there and the, the expectation would be would be to to be ten points clear, you know, but it doesn't always work like that in League One as you know where as Ipswich, you have um Sunderland, of you know, all these big boys that have come down in previous years. It's taken them a long while to get out and uh, Derby County are, are in this year. I will say with Derby, they have to go up. I think with Peterborough, they have to go up this year. I think with Bolton I think they can keep a lot of the core players at that football club. I think Paul Smith can and go again next year. And look at the it's an aging squad. I don't see many I don't see Warren being there next year if they don't go up. They have to go up this year with that squad. Lovely. Uh we'll I'm sure we'll come back to Derby later on this evening. Um, but it is uh yeah, it's it's still I mean, there was is, is there anything that has broken over the last cut? I mean we we should probably go. What were we saying before we um we jumped the layout in? Was broken. The... Oh, sorry, no, I haven't clicked the right button there, have I? That's ruined it completely. Right, forget you saw that. Ready? <laughs> and there we go. Wow. That's where we should be. Yeah. Fabulous. Yes, um, hands, everyone. I um, ta-da. I think uh, Wardy's waited long enough to to talk about this man. So uh, <laughs> let's get him on the screen now. There's probably, and we said um we said before, didn't we that there's going to be a split between your opinion on this man. Um, my opinion is probably going to be, I don't know, different to what you're about to say, probably Jack, but um, what do you reckon? What do you make of it so far of what you've seen, what you've read, what you've seen of clips and what you're expecting from what he can provide to your side. I know what you're going to say. And I know what Pompey fans are going to say. I know what Blackpool fans are going to say. I've heard them all. I've read them all. And he is a a winger that suits this side. He suits Des Buckingham. We're not bringing him in as a, we need a winger. Let's sign an available winger. We signed him permanently. This is a permanent deal. We've given Blackpool a decent fee. And we've been looking at Owen Dell as a 25-year-old for a little while. And I do believe he will fit into this Des Buckingham side exceptionally well. He is frustrating. He is actually still quite raw at 25, actually. However, when you look at someone like Stanley Mills, who is frustrating, I sometimes think wingers can be quite frustrating uh, in terms of frustrating areas of the pitch. Wingers tend to be that type of profile because especially the ones that want to take players on, uh, uh, players that, that want to drive with the ball, quick wingers do tend to be fairly frustrating because they are ones that not every time they're going to beat their man or not every time they're going to run at a player, sometimes they can take the easy option and, and be less direct. I do believe Dell is a good signing for Oxford. I I, seri- I honestly do. I know some people will sort of just say things because they've signed it and they don't really want to give their genuinely honest thoughts on it. I do believe uh, Dell fits this Des Buckingham side, that he wants pacey wide players who are going to get the ball out in those wide areas and cause problems. And Dell will do that. And he has done that. Build up, you know, he needs to improve his output for sure. That's the biggest thing. Can he improve on the output? Uh, can he become less frustrating? It's difficult until I see him. I can't exactly, you know, feel in you know a similar way. For example, on the you know on that frustration, but I I, I do believe it's a good addition. I think it's a, a clever one for Oxford. I think if you look at Des Buckingham and what he wants from a player, Owen Dell has that in abundance. Uh, I've heard great things about his is is attitude i think that's one of the biggest things i've heard he's a great person off the pitch as well as on it i also know he's got a young family so this is a permanent deal that he wanted to do because he wants to move his family down here and, and really settle that's one thing in own Dale that people aren't mentioning enough blackpool or pompey fans these have been loan deals and at blackpool he wasn't really ever settled he's in and out on loan out he's now got a home he's now here on a permanent basis and it's time for him now to really kick on. He showed glimpses of what he can do. It's now time on a permanent basis to really show what he's about. Like I said, at, at Pompey, he did show glimpses of that quality, but that was always a loan deal. And that wasn't always something that we saw uh, as a flash there. Sorry, everyone. Always, just flashed. What, do apologise. Wasn't always someone that, that could bring those those great moments consistently. Hopefully he can do that now. Uh, Sam, I'll put the comment on the idea of the power to do so. I'm so so powerful. Uh, there was a smart signing phase that by Critchley since December. Also, he's been playing as a wing back, um, which is really bizarre. He's definitely a winger. Um, we need wingers uh, on the right and just more bodies in general. And he is a right winger. He's not a left wing back. So that is ridiculous. And a big reason why I think he, he maybe hasn't been great 
I don't think he's been bad though. Uh, Dez clearly selling the player, selling the club to the players, maybe less slideshows. Uh, you'll know what that means if you were part of the Liam Manning era. Um, there was a lot of talk about Liam Manning talking about slideshows a lot. Um, Dell's wife a also love a slideshow. Or like, were they just sitting in the classroom watching PowerPoints? Is what you're Liam Manning is, is definitely, from what we know, he's definitely more of a classroom manager, whereas right. uh, compared to a on the grass one. Um, Jordan's mentioned something to do with um, Dad's personal life, which is extremely sad. Um, and, and we do believe that now having that permanent home is is going to hopefully help him out personally, uh, but also professionally as well. Um, so hopefully he does settle, uh, as Jordan uh, does mention there too. Um yeah, do you want me to uh, provide yeah, a bit of opinion, or should we go to yeah, Jake I, and, and Ben? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, go ahead. I think I know what what the the general consensus is from Pompey fans. For me, it, it's about seeing it with my own eyes. But there's certain elements to this game you can't question. There, it's one of those where you really, really like him. I really liked him. Um, I think his inability to get the ball in the box ended up frustrating. Pompey fans for too long. He did come back and score against us for the Blackpool 4 0 win, which always happens. Um, but one thing that I will say about Owen Dale, and, and he has had a really tricky private life in recent times, and, and it's incredibly sad. And, and it's one of those stories that really humanizes football. And I th- we obviously all send our very best to him and his partner um, and, and the whole Dale family. He won Community Player of the Year at Pompey. He was only on loan for a season and he managed to completely immerse himself into every single inch of that city. And I think that is absolutely fantastic. And yes, you want the footballing ability. Yes, you want him to be able to provide you with the goals and assists that a winger should provide you with. And I think from what I saw from Oxford the other night, although it wasn't on show for 100% of the time, and you'll be completely honest about that, Wardy, but... When you get going down your flanks, you get going. And I think Owen is going to come in and really compliment that. He's not the fastest winger I've seen in the world. He's pacey, but he's not the fastest. And if he can get that end product delivery sorted, having beaten his man, he's going to be a really strong addition for you. The one thing I would say is when the confidence wasn't there, it wasn't a case of he could bring it upon himself to get himself stuck out of that rut and, and, and rekindle it. It kind of was a very kind of, oh, Owen Dale's not performing again. He's not performing again. And it just kind of was a slippery slope and ended up sort of have, disappearing multiple, into the abyss. Did you have multiple wingers that season? Uh, we weren't great just... that season. We weren't great. And I particularly remember Owen Dale having a much stronger start to the season than than a finish. Um, I, I remember him probably scoring what was only a handful of goals, really. I remember him getting a goal... I believe it was towards the tail end of, I want to say it was Bristol Rovers at home last season. It might have been Port Vale at home. One of the two. I might be wrong. Someone will correct me. But he got the goal that he, I think it was one of the, I think it was the third of a 3-1 win against a team at Fratton Park in the early part of last season. He scored and I thought, right, he's going to kick on now. He's going to get loads for us. Much like I did with Dane Scarlett. But it just never quite materialised. So, I hope that he can he can kick on and, and in a what is a really strong team. Um there we go. He do. I think it was Bristol Rovers. Um it was. Thank you very much. If he can kick on and, and, and I think a regular spot for Owen Dale, which it looks like he's very much part of the plans of the future as a long term deal, we we're great for him. Nappers, Owen Dale. Yeah, good signing. Um watch him when I think he played against but he did play against um Fleet were doing the season. And Blackpool, I've commented on, I think it's comical the way they play sometimes away from home. You know, with CJ one side, Owen Dale the other. And um, no, he's one of those players that he, he, it's a bit like a Milner type of player. He can play in multiple different positions behind a striker, right or left. Um, Part of the front three, he can play wing back for you as well. And does a job, he gets on with it. He's not going to, you know, beat 30, you know, you know, three or four men and get you off your feet. And, you know, he's not rapid, but what he is, he's a solid type of player. Seven or eight every week, he will get goals, he will get assists, he can create. He reminds me a bit of a Paddy Lane type of player that he isn't blessed with pace, but he's got skill, he's got agility. And, um, and you know, the best thing is he's, he's very able at this, you know, at this level and, uh, you know, a good player and um, I think it'll suit Oxford. I, I think Larry, he, he's got a nice fresh skin fade. His beard's nicely done and we've seen it with Dez. A couple of months time, you're not going to look like that, son. 
Yeah, no. Well, hopefully the, the Dale's going to come in and reduce the bags under the eyes. That's the hope uh, with the, the output that he hopefully does come with, or just a general ability. Um, I think it's Gab that has put in the EFL debate here about drive and that pays. One thing I will say about this signing is it's very Des Buckingham. I put that on on the on Twitter when it was sort of rumoured. We're talking about a signing that definitely fits the manager. And Des Buckingham, although I think a few of these names were on the list, I think Will Goodwin might have been one that was already on the list. Owen Dell, I can tell you, definitely was on the list with Liam Manning. We're using a similar list, I think, because again, there wasn't an expected turnover. That's yeah. sensible, though, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. And I think we've had to, well, we didn't have time, really, let's be honest. We didn't have time to sort of scrap the list and go again. So we're looking at uh, players that were on there. And, and that's encouraging because you look at the majority of the Liam Manning signings in the summer, they have worked out. Um, Again, Tyler Bury is another example, another winger with that pace and drive who was on the list. And we've gone and got him now in January on loan. Owen Dale's a permanent addition. He's very Des Buckingham. He loves the wide areas. He loves the flanks. He loves to you know, drive with the ball and get us up the pitch at times. I really hope he finds that consistency that ultimately I think he has been lacking in his last couple of moves. But yeah, excited with Owen Dale. I'm even more excited that he's permanent and he's 25 and we've got him on, on a on a long-term contract, which is which is good. Um, Naples, we'll come back to you because Fleetwood have now named Elijah Campbell as the player they got on loan from Great Everton. Signing. That's a done deal. You needed a fullback. It's done, Naples. Yeah, good signing. We needed someone young, someone quick, someone hungry, and he takes the place of someone that doesn't want to be here, basically. So, good signing. Jake, what have you made of um, a Fleetwood's window on the whole? Because, I mean, you look at it, it's been... I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a secret about how I'm going to do my video tomorrow. And I've got a criteria of how you judge a window. And we were speaking about, is the strong is the squad stronger? Tom said Pompey's was. I think there's a few clubs that, that have actually really strengthened over January. Some not so much. Fleetwood's hard to judge because they're getting rid of players, not because they're not good enough, but because they need to get rid of them for financial reasons going into League Two, most likely. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about Fleetwood, Jake. What have you made of it? It's sort of now picking up with the, the the teasers about times of these. We expect more to be done, but this has been in the in the pipeline for a while. Um, it's been completed now, though. But as, as a whole, how do you look at it? Yeah, I, I think, and I spoke at, uh, uh, with with Gab yesterday actually on on EFL debate about the best piece of business that Fleet would have done this transfer window is getting the likes of Brendan Wiradu and Junior Caterna to sign new contracts. Um, you know, you, you can talk about the ins and outs, but for me, that is fundamental because that's Fleetwood basically saying, for me, from an outside point of view, look, we know there is a chance that we could be playing in League Two next year. You are an asset and we need to protect you as an asset and we want to achieve a certain fee if you are to move on. Um, and when you look at the players like Wiradu, who's been a very good player for Fleetwood, probably the, the best player they've, they've had this season alongside Josh Earl and, and maybe Marriott, and then Katerna, who's a player of a, a, a big potential, a lot of potential in the game. Um, I think that was really important. In terms of the incomings, look, Harry Boys for me, is a really solid League One addition. I don't think he is a, a, a quality of a player that should be playing for a team in the bottom four. He's a very quality wing-back going forward. He's got a wicked eye for a cross. He's very quick, very agile, and, and, and has got a wand of a left foot for a, for set pieces. Obviously, Ronan Coughlin comes in with, with great reputation from Waterford, having scored 33 goals. Was it Bennett for Waterford as they won the, the, the they got promoted last year? Um, and then this, this Tommy Lonergan we don't know a lot about, and then I won't claim to know a lot about Elijah Campbell, but you, you also look at the outs, and, and Josh Vella, Scott Robertson, Jack Marriott, Josh Earl, they were... Three of them were pretty big players for Fleetwood. I think Josh Feller was the captain. He, um, whilst he he lacked quality in moments, I think you could always say that Josh Feller tried. Um, I think he always put effort in. Um, you then got Jack Marriott, who's a natural goal scorer. Losing, you know, Jack Marriott could score twenty goals at this this level, and for Fleetwood to lose him, I think that's a massive blow. Um, Josh Earl, you know, Nappers bangs on about him being one of the a really good defender. He absolutely is. He's a, a massive loss. I think there'll be a lot, a lot worse defensively for him going. And then Scott Robertson, um, obviously he headed off down to Notts County. I don't think you can say too much. I don't think he got too much of a, a look in, but, um, yeah, it, it, it's from a, from an, from an asset, keeping your asset point of view, I think Fleet would have done well in terms of, you know, 
looking after themselves for the future. But you really do sit and think, well, this is a club that are, are really looking to recruit for League Two. Um, and you, like I say, you do tend to get worried for them. So, yeah, that was a bit of a bit of a nice summary for you, Fleetwood. There you go. Fun of, say, fun of life from, in League Two. From a team that are trying to protect their assets to a team that are buying every bloody asset, Charlton. They're mm. also buying every asset without a manager, which is even more interesting. Uh, we're we're hearing that. And I'm going to double check it. I do trust yeah. the chat, but we'll, we'll double check Peter it. Rourke. It is right yeah. um, that Nathan Jones is, is in the running. This is a transfer deadline day show. Uh, Tom, if you could take away his 10 day stint uh, at uh, at the football club you despise the most um, as a manager, let's 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 pretend he didn't go ten there. Day. It wasn't 10 days, but it felt like 10 days. Um, of course, at, at Luton Town, he was extremely successful. And as a, a manager coming down to League One, we'll come on to Charlton and their business because they have been very active. They could still do some more before it win- before the window shuts. However, let's focus on on the manager because that is the, the elephant in the room. They're recruiting without one. Tom, uh, try your hardest. As a manager in the Championship, not in the Premier League, at Luton Town, he proved to be a top-level coach. To come down to League One, for Charlton, which let's be honest, isn't the most stable place at the moment. I think that is an ambitious move. Is it the right one in all areas? We'll have to wait and see. We've thought that with the previous Charlton managers that haven't quite worked out, but it's certainly a big name. Um, I'm not going to say what I think about the bloke. Um, I can't stand him. I think he's probably one of the worst human beings to ever walk planet Earth, but there we go. Um, I think if you take away that element of it as a manager... Is it probably the best option that Charlton can go for right now? I'd probably say, yeah, it probably is. Um, I I think that, and and maybe more of a kind of a point is that when we spoke about this on on Tealoff a lot last week, is that the uh, the 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 model of recruiting a manager or recruiting players without a manager as a head coach role or or whatever you're you're kind of doing. It's, it always strikes me as a bit bizarre because the the manager is therefore coming in and it's now going to be post January transfer window because Nathan Jones is probably not going to be announced tonight or may well be, but the window is pretty much shut. The, the weird thing for me is why on earth, and we talk about head coach models, we talk about directors of football, what has attracted these players other than the cash to the football club without a manager, although the you know, the, the recruiting has been good. And, and I think Napp has described it as, as sort of Chelsea-esque in League One, really, with Charlton in terms of obviously both London clubs. Um, th- yeah, it, it feels a little bit like, let's throw absolutely everything at it and hope that something sticks. It hasn't. And I'd hate to think where Charlton will be without Alfie May in terms of their goal scoring record, because because they'd be pretty much nowhere, I don't think. And, and I think they'd be on the floor. And I even go as far to say they'd probably be down there mixing it with some of the relegation uh, candidates at the moment in League One with 16, 17 games to go. Um, yeah, it, it, is it the right fit? Time will tell us. Um, yeah, sorry if I went louder, Wardy. Am I, am I sorted now or am I... Um, yeah. So... Uh, oh, so yeah, uh, that that's what I would say. I I don't like the man. Um, I never have. I never will. I'm not going to repeat what I would say. Um, on air. And Jake's gone for some reason. Where have you gone? You're you muted. are muted, Jess. Someone muted him, or has he muted himself? No, I, can't <laughs> I said who's it. buzzing. I said, oh, sorry, who's buzzing? So I can hear yeah, buzzing. Someone's got it, someone's got it, deadline day on. Someone's on got it. news. My Maybe phone is day. is next to my my mic. Well, quite close to my microphone. So Wait, was... a little bit. Oh, it's Fleetwood, Fleetwood. yeah. Okay. We've got three more. Come on. That must be exciting, mate, knowing that you're bringing some players in. Hey, Wardy. Is that... Nice, wasn't it? I like the way they've done it. They've got rid of the dross, and it's like, we'll focus on the outgoings, now we can focus on the incomings. I like it. Well, that is one of the outgoings. Oh! Um, Is that... that, That's touching nerve, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and I messaged him before, wishing him luck, right? And he, he went, oh, thanks, mate. Really appreciate it. And he goes, and I went, oh, I'll keep an eye on it out for you. Because I'm thinking, well, bombs to get to Wembley, you know, play a final. Tickets, Josh, come on, you know. You have an old pal out. Um, but then he goes, oh, I, I watch your vlogs as a, as a way to keep informed on the club. I'm thinking, thank you, Josh. Appreciate that. So, um, oh. yeah. Hello, Josh Earl. Well done on your move to Barnsley. <laughs> as a move, <laughs> yeah. though, Ben. It's a superb move. It's, yeah. 
it it fits. It really fits Barnes because he play a back three. They keep saying, oh, they're playing left wing back when Caddy needs a rest. Mm, questionable. Um, he might not get caught out as much at Barnes because you've got better players. Um, he'll fit in left centre half. He's on a three and a half year deal, still close to home, a good football club, a big football club for this level. I think it's a brilliant move for him and his family. Like he only had six months left here. Like he's now gonna go in to sort himself out till he's about, I think he'll be 29, 30, you know, when when his contract at Barnsley is up. It's a brilliant move. And um a lot of the time, he was like a captain without the arm man on a lot last time. To be fair, our captain at the time, we, I've seen better captains on a bird's eye box than our captain last week. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it That's world class. I love that so much. <laughs> I think it, it was one of those, it was one of those where you sort of, you knew it was happening. And Ben's been really active in our chat about sort of players that are going to go. And normally we're speaking about names that, you don't really want to move on when you're in a relegation battle. It's about recruiting talent that you can hopefully provide a, a survival push with. With Fleetwood, a very different situation. I think Naples would agree it's not nice, but we are preparing now for a, a League Two campaign at Fleetwood. So making sure that those players are probably your top earners moving out of the football club early doors makes it much easier. And then you can start planning about, about next season. Uh, Jake, you're flapping your arms about. Is that for a reason? You got you no, in, no, or, I'm just it... fresh on Twitter, mate, to be fair. No? Just having a look. No, no latest incomings? Uh, let me just refresh my list. Why are you refreshing? No, we haven't list? spoken about Bristol Rovers yet. They've made a sign in today, haven't they? Yeah, uh, the, they uh, have Elkin. Elkin, Baggett. great release video. Brilliant uh, release video. We've had today, absolutely. Elkan. I do like the Plymouth one as well, though. When they're sat in the car doing the a revamp. Uh, I, have you seen that one? The revamp. I of the thought music that video. player surely cannot walk into that dressing room with his head held high. I haven't done that as you, you know. Oh, welcome to the club, mate. You know, really well. You know, we're really looking forward to working with you. Would you just not be taking the mick out of him for that horrific announcement? Video? I think I think it shows that he's got the character and he he's happy. Like, where's he come? He's come from a Premier League club, isn't he? Uh, he's moved from Arsenal to Villa, and Villa have loaned him straight to Plymouth. So imagine being an, being on the Arsenal books with Mikel, and the next thing you know, you're sat in a car outside Home Park filming a music oh, video right. oh, oh, in that in that free car park outside. Uh, home it, park. I think I think it shows that he's got a bit to him. Anyway, that's not that's not our league, is it? But yes, no, Bristol Row was Jakey Boy. Yes, Elkin Baggett. I think he's got experience at this level before. With I think he had a loan spell with Cheltenham. Um, but he, he's obviously, I think he's, is he Indonesian or Singapore? I can't remember. I think he's, he's Indonesian. Indone- he's Indonesian. He's uh, got like, he's got like a million followers or something. They do a, love him. He's a yeah, massive he, name in Indonesia. He's, well, he's also a massive player in terms of height. He's, I think he's like six foot six or something, something like that. Or oh, Andy Moon 1. just tweeted 7, your main point point oh. oh, there we go then. Oh. Um, oh, hello. Oh, Cheerio, hello. Then. But no. um, yeah, I think yeah. it's a good a good bit of business. I think you've got at the back there, Elkin Baggett, Connor Taylor. They've got they're getting a bit of depth there, Bristol Rovers. I know it's only for half a season, but um, yeah, I think it's a, a solid addition. Um, obviously, we're led to believe that Bristol Rovers will still have something in their locker between now and eleven o'clock due to the money that they've received today from Aaron Collins. So. Uh, I'm constantly re- refreshing Dan Hargreaves' Twitter page uh, just to see if they're uh, they're going to say. Can we, can we talk about Jed Steer as well? By the way, <laughs> so I, 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 about that, I, 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 so I'm a and I'm, I'm a big admirer of Darren McAntony. I know a lot aren't. He's a, he is someone with you know very strong views. But if you listen to his podcast, and like, I've listened to probably like the last five, six. Um, and he was saying about Jed C, he goes, he wants to get a deal done, but Jed doesn't want to be a number two. The budget could allow Jed to be in, and in terms of experience, I think Jed apparently was sat down on the sofa on Tuesday and thought, I, I want to be out, even if it's number two, even if it's pushing and helping to get a promotion on my CV. Um, he is arrogant, like Jordan just said, but he, he is good to listen to, and he gives, he gives you information, and... Yeah, He's not like most chairmans that just say what the like what you have to say, and he's boring. I think that he says different things, and he'll speak his mind. And a lot of the FFP, a lot of the stuff he says, I'm there agreeing with him. And he was speaking about like Coventry's model yesterday, how, how that works effectively, and I'm there like saying the exact same thing as him. And I'm there like thinking, you know, he, 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 I think we need more owners like Darren McAntony pushing that that regard. And I know he's kind of he's been friendly with our. 
chairman, old chairman, chairperson, um, chairman of some sorts. Um, and they, they run football clubs similar ways in terms of a wage structure of certain players and how the, the driver have bit better, like more expensive strikers because they're the ones that go and sell on. So, um, um, yeah, it is like football manager. Yeah, I think that's why I like it so much. By the way, can we appreciate the uh, drop in numbers since Andy Moon has uh, tweeted? <laughs> we've gone from, yeah. we've still got a good number, but Andy Moon now is the dictator of how many people watch our views. Um, if you are a Pompey fan and you are you know, thinking of leaving, we will carry on talking about Pompey uh, at some point. We've got plenty of time. Um, you may not sign Still well over else. 300 of us in the street, which is, is great it to is see. Impressive. So, but it's, it's great to that, I think, <laughs> by the way, can I just say, by the way, there's more people watching this stream than there has been at, like the most uh, like attended Fleetwood away game this season. I think the most we've got is 250. So, no, no, I think we've got 400 at one game, but Bar Carlisle away, you know, I think we're, I think we're beating so we it. had uh, we everyone can come over and we can all replicate a Fleetwood away end. That'd yeah. be really good. Um, we need to talk about Blackpool, gentlemen, because I think Oxford that's been just about Oxford to just signing. about to announce. <laughs> I don't think we do. Uh, We're not going to talk about Blackpool yet, everybody. We will talk about um, Blackpool. Oh, no, uh, we've got Fleetwood. a double whammy. T-Lock of... transfers. Oh, we'll start on, with you, ben. Nappers. Let's we'll start with you, ben. Nappers, because I'm going to try and Live! <laughs> it's Potter! Potter's here to help! From Phoenix Knights, come on! Does he live under Potter's the stairs, Ben, do you know? Stranraw! He's not from Stranraw, unfortunately. Yeah, um, he's from Sheffield, so uh, it's a bit, bit different. But he's a young defender, apparently. He's 19 from a little bit of... No uh, research that I did. So, um, welcome. <laughs> Is it a uh, permanent deal, Ben? No, it's a loan deal, I think. Because um, oh. we got the upsetting news today that Kabango Shimanga had been, you know, terminated his <laughs> loan and gone to Boring Wood. So, <laughs> I'm you, you love so it, 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 you, Ben. You love it. It was the worst fleet, worst fleet player I've ever seen in my life. Terrible. If Kabango can play for Fleetwood, so can I. Oh. That's. That's honestly, but yeah, yeah, we we brought another. I think we've brought bring four or five signings on deadline. I think four are defenders. I've Herb, worked is it? Is. Probably <laughs> tell, it's permanent. Probably is tells it? you quite a lot about what you need to know at the minute, doesn't it? Have you signed who on a permanent for? place? Who, 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 who it's, a, it's the M1. It's from Blackburn, it's the the videos. At me. They're not. Oh, just tell me the details. I don't care about any videos. It's just this Leonard fella from Blackburn. They normally keep you waiting for yeah. five minutes for the actual article, don't they? Which I've found has been rather disappointing. Jake, uh, not Jake. Um, Jake, are we actually going to have any Lincoln stuff tonight? Oh, by the way? No, I think just, it's just here for the laughs. We, we, we've just Lincoln announced. Don't need anyone. We have had a tweet from Lincoln. Uh, hang on, hang on. Sorry, 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 to, sorry to interrupt. They've okay. put the M1. Now, there's one road from Oxford to, to Sunderland, and that is the M1, which obviously would mean Jane Matete. However, to get to Blackburn, you also have to take the M1 as well. So both of the potential rumours have got to take the M1 to Oxford, and they've just put... We it's quite a, a popular road, road the Wardy. The did the takeaways so thing have anything to do with that last one? It didn't, did it? I not really. No. I mean, no, so these rumours are not great. Right? Christ almighty, you think... Finley Potter is looks like a Luke Little, a protege. He's what nineteen? And he looks about thirty-nine. Great, so really? mighty. Well, I work out who we've actually signed, Nappers. Why is this important for Fleetwood? Why is, is this addition important? Um, because you need players. What shit question? <laughs> I'll tell you what. I was thinking, right? <laughs> now, you know, my goal at Wigan away five years ago might have you know got me a call up. You know, and the all-time challenge at Cambridge didn't quite impress it. I thought I've got another chance. That was but great, back, by the way. I'm going to be back into the team. I thought, well, you know, um, you know, back back in the team, and um, yeah, well, no, uh, it, we just need players. We just need, you know, something as well. We, we probably weaken our squad, but we've. I did players that probably want to be here and that will fight. Now, I would, I'd rather have a weaker squad, but teams that want to fight. Um, and I think you see with Lincoln, I think Lincoln are you know, the third best team, obviously, in here. But I think that they can go to anywhere and win because of the ability to fight and the, the ability that they don't always have the quality against the top six. But they can because of the way they play, the way that they want to work for each other. And we've not had that this season. So now we've got that, maybe we'll stop picking up a couple of points. Yeah. Funny. <laughs> Is she next door now? As you can tell her off in person. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be nice with her. She's just on your tie. Um, I, I, I think what, the, general, the general consensus at the moment. Harry said, gonna... "Your tie." 
Harris did do my tie, yeah. Um, oh, bless him. In fact, it's quite weird. I won't go into... They they are... I, every now and again, I can see the people that I'm living with. I've, I'm on the sort of side bit and I can see the kitchen from my room and they're just looking over. So they are seeing a live deadline day from our... From over the are they thing. watching it in the so, kitchen? I hope, unless they've watching, got they're watching it on the TV in the kitchen every now and again because the darts is on. Um, but they don't go watch the, the darts, guys. Stick with us tonight. Yeah. We've got you covered until gone 11. Um, just to jump in, oh we my have god, a... I've just got it. It's I've just worked it out. The look who's it's Jay Matete, Jay in the from the in betweeners is doing the announcement. What that's wow. right, isn't it? And that would no, that looks like now you, you're muted again, Jay. It... He's muted again. Jake, stop muting microphone. I, I, sorry, I was listening because our um our director of football and chief exec are on a, a deadline day live stream with the Stacey West. So I was trying to figure out Who? if they were going to tell us we we're going to sign anyone. Can I just say, by the way, Lincoln might not do any business, but they've got the best media account in the division. <laughs> <laughs> oh, proud. <laughs> I think it is definitely Jay Matete. Uh, it's Jay from the In Inbetweeners doing it, and Sunderland's Oxford is directly the M1. Uh, and by the way, that is a huge coup because we were told a midfielder wasn't priority. It was a striker. We are desperate for a striker with that athletic, progressive ability. And I was so you sure, sure it's not Jay Lynch. No, I don't think it is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. It, although you know, we'll have to wait and see. That, that there's a we do need a goalkeeper. You know, so you know, we're not quite sure. No, I'm pretty He's sure that is. Than you. Okay. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Cool. And that's not that's not difficult. Um, and then, Jake, by the way, if that is or? if we've got a striker as well on top of this deal, by the way, that's incredible from Oxford. Well, Jez George has just confirmed that we have signed a midfielder, but there's it's all very quiet at the moment. So, <laughs> you've just signed him, but you just locked him away in a cupboard or something. He's just put. He's just gone on and put. We've just signed a midfielder. Oh, Take yeah. that what you will. Um, I was going to, before we had the Oxford and when it gets revealed, then please do jump in a uh, little bit of boring, pomping news, but because I would imagine the majority of our <laughs> audience tonight would be interested in this. And, and I know that there will be a couple. Uh, there was a tweet a little while ago, just well, three or four minutes ago from Mr. Andrew Moon, who said uh, Pompey had hoped to get one final deal done, but the move fell through at the selling club's end. So nothing to do with Portsmouth Football Club. Okay. Um Fell gotcha. through at the selling club's end. We don't know which club that was. Uh, hopefully that does become clear. That might become clear between now and 11 o'clock this evening. Uh, so stick with us on that if you'd like to know. We'll obviously be reviewing all the, the deals when when things quieten down a little bit. But this does feel like a bit of a pin, pinch point in our transfer deadline day stream because we are all awaiting the news uh, that might be Jay Lynch, might be Jaden Stockley, might be Jay Matete. Who knows? It's definitely not Ryan Hardy because his first name is not <laughs> yeah, Jay. He's playing for Plymouth. Logan is pleased that the bingo card has been ticked. Can I just say, by the way, we've already had a couple of those tonight, which is good to see. Uh, we all work at the same office. We've we kind of tried to make our studio as office. synonymous yeah. as possible. This, this is our, our our studio, we should say. Shouldn't it? It's the, the virtual studio. One day, we'll have enough of a budget to buy a studio together and, and do a fella's job, um, which would be uh, absolutely fabulous. So... Um, yeah, Isn't that'll it, marvelous, eh? Isn't it, it would be. We are well over, well, depending on what time we finish, but of regulation time, we are well over halfway through tonight's stream. Good evening to over 300 of you that still join us here live uh, across YouTube, Facebook, across all the different uh, channels and mediums that you can join us on around the world this evening. This is Transfer Deadline Day Live. Uh, we are led to believe that, uh, oh, Jakey boy. Oh, oh no, oh, sorry. No. I thought that was a finger raise. No, I'll carry no, on. No, 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 no. Sorry. I was just I, itching my ear. Apologies. No, um, about you. Are they going yes, red, they're... mate? Are they going red? Yeah. Um, all well, the rumours, you just can't can't handle them. I can't. I can't, can't, I can't handle, handle it. it. There's, a, there's a mystery midfielder. <laughs> I, 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 doubt it is, I doubt it is Fleetwood <laughs> that have pulled out on that one, Nappers. I wouldn't have thought that would have broken down if that was to be something that was going on. Um, mm. But uh, but we shall see. Uh, we look like uh, a Westlife tribute bland. Pest life. Oh. Thank you very much, Merlin. That's, uh, yeah, very kind of you. I think we can kind of take that as a compliment. Westlife are... Uh, Fabulous. Do love a good bit of a Westlife sing along. Maybe we could arrange that for the next TLOP extra. We could do a little bit of a, a medley, couldn't we? Um, 
Are we having any news, Wardy, or are we still... Uh, no, no we, you do like to gonna, drag things out, don't you? I think we are going to probably do it a quarter two, so we can move on through. from this conversation. Yeah. Um, but I was going to say, on, on top of this, I spoke earlier about Jay Matete being that midfielder we're looking at and that striker. I wasn't convinced that we were going to sign that midfielder because we were told all day that it looked like only one more after Owen Dale. If we can get uh, Owen Dale, Jay Matete and Harry um, Leonard in on loan, in one window, we've sorted out the winger situation. We've sorted out a striker on top of Will Goodwin and Mark Harris that's finding form. And uh, we, we've managed to sign a midfielder that I think is in exactly the type of profile that we're missing at the moment. We are crying out for somebody who's that tenacious type, but also is comfortable on the ball. And Gemma Tete has all of that in abundance. So I'll be honest, I think it's an exceptional piece of business. I think if they've done two on one after this, we've been sold all day. It looks like a forward if they can get this midfielder that looks to be the case and that striker, because it'd be weird if we've been told a striker and Des Buckingham said in his pre pre release earlier that a striker was his number one priority. They said that they would sign a midfielder if it was right. Clearly if it is Jay Matete, they do think it's right. I think to be honest, again, I'm I'm, not, I'm being very careful on the Ryan Hardy situation. I'm not going to go and say we've definitely signed him and go over the top. I do not believe anything <laughs> until I can see a player or a new player in an Oxford shirt. Uh, but I'm putting two and two together. He has been linked. It is Jay from the Inbetweeners. Sunderland to Oxford is the M1. I'm hoping it's him. Let's wait and see. I think it's a really ambitious piece of business from Oxford United once again. I presume it's a loan if it is happening. Let's wait and see. Uh, um, Graham said, will anybody from Pompey go out on loan? Are you Schofield, White, Scully? Sorry, Jake, I, I, I did jump across you there. We'll come no, back to you. Right. Um, White, Scully, can't see them play much footy. We are believed that uh, the evening has ended for Pompey, Graham, and I don't actually think that Scully and White, albeit not really in any of the plans, I mean, Wardy had this conversation on the phone even earlier on today to say that um, White and Scully weren't in the squad for Oxford, and when Massino turned around at Port Vale away to choose from his bench for who to come on as a wide option, he went for Josh Martin, which is no disrespect to Josh Martin, because I like him a lot, but he didn't go for either White or Scully. Uh, Brian, who I know is a big supporter of all our channels, said, uh, hi, Tom and everyone, just joining the chat. Loving it, have to say, loving Bolton signing of Aaron Taylor. Um, we offered Aaron Taylor. Aaron, I think it's Aaron Collins. That's what, he's, that's what he's meant to say. Uh, 750k will certainly bolster our forward line. It absolutely will. Um, I think Pompey just want to strengthen the depth, hence keeping White and Scully. Yeah, I think, and there is an argument, and we'll we'll get um we'll go go to you in, in whatever you were going to say, Jake. But I will put to you that big squads are what you need for promotion out of a league like League One, aren't they? Yes, absolutely. You need to be able to go to your bench and if a game's not going your way, then you need to be able to bring somebody on that can completely change it. Um, some people see it as a negative of having too many players to try and keep happy and you, you do, especially when you've got good players coming off the bench, they, they won't want to be sat there. I know for a fact Anthony Scully will not want to be sat on the Portsmouth bench, mate. He will, he will be, want to be playing for Portsmouth week in, week out. I know him really well and um, he won't want to be sat there. I'm sure Gavin White is the same. He's uh, got a good reputation at this level through, through Oxford. What I was going to say was, um, John Palmer, if we've got any Cheltenham fans kicking about, he is expecting three more deals in at Cheltenham between now wow. and the end of the window, as well as a further departure. So Cheltenham could well be uh, could be quite active between now and the end of the window. A point to, to Nappers, and, and he, he briefly mentioned it with um, the ownership at, at Peter Bren, how open they are. Um, we said, and we're, we're sometimes a little bit heavy on players coming in and look, this show is about who's going to get who and who's going to sign who. For Posh in this window, it was about keeping hold of players, right? You look at um, Edwards, their centre-half, who's been linked to a move to the, every Premier League club, it seems. Uh, you've got people like Ricky J. Jones, Poku, Mason Clark. These are top, top talents. Nappers, Posh are one of the best teams in League One I've seen, if not the best team in League One I've seen. I'll be honest, I think he is that good. They are that good. And those players are that good. To keep hold of them, that's almost, I don't like saying that's almost a signing because it's not, but it's as good as getting somebody else in because this window is not just about recruiting, it's about keeping hold of players too. Yeah, and another thing, D-Max, that he, he values a club at, I think, uh, around about 23, 24 million pounds. And I, I honestly think that I came out and recently said the value of that squad in a couple of years' time will be 50 million pounds. I think Ronnie Edwards will go for three or four million pounds in the summer. Um, 
But then you, I could go and see him playing for England in two or three years' time and being a 30, 40, 50 million pound player. He's 20 years old. You know, he's got a number of appearances under his belt already and looks the real deal. You know, Knight has got 100 appearances under his belt. When he played Fleetwood, it was Bill Okapic, uh, PK, Burroughs, Knight, um, Edwards. Um, Ramdell was the attacking midfielder. Kiprianu, Collins, uh, Poku, Mason Clark, and, and um, Jake Ricky Joe Jones. The average, the oldest was 26, the youngest was 20. The average age was about 23.3, something like that. And that shows you everything you need to. And it still had, I think, about nearly a thousand DFL appearances in there or career appearances in there. This is everything you need to know. You've got goals, you've got strength, you've got you know, pace, um, you've got clean sheets and the winning ugly now, Peter, but this time of the year where the pitches aren't quite as good, they are winning games of football. And when it starts, you're know, getting towards a nice stage of the season again around Easter time, Peter, I think, will be in that situation to go up. And I, I do think that Peter, Portsmouth, Bolton, Derby all get over 90 points. That is what I will say. I, I, I really believe that. And I, I think on my prediction... I think it went down to the last day with the three teams chasing. I really do believe that. But this Peter side are, and I use this word a lot, phenomenal. And they're a joy to watch. And, you know, even in tough moments, they win games of football. And um, for me, in terms of a squad, I don't think anyone else in this league comes close to them in terms of a squad than them. Their 11 is frightening. Jamie Matete in at Oxford, confirmed. Wow. Wow. That is that's big. Uh, that's as big as Ryan Hardy, Wardy. <laughs> yeah, and this time it's someone that was at Plymouth and has joined us. So it's, uh, it's an improvement on last year, isn't it? Um, yeah, we it's massive for us. It's really important and a bit of a surprise. I, I didn't think Oxford were going to pull this out of the bag. It looks as though this is quite late on. He can play for Reading because remember the cutoff is actually uh, Friday at 12 p.m. So he, you know anyone realistically that, that signs that's fit and can play is fit to play can happen. I think it's a fantastic signing. I think Major, uh, Jay Matete is an absolutely fantastic addition. He is somebody that I think comes in and gives us a completely different option. In fact, while you were talking um, a second ago, I said I put Jay Matete as an option for Derby in my video and I've written down some of the notes. An impressive ball carrier, provide a slightly more dynamic option in the midfield, fresh legs, tenacious, he can be quite intense, he can progress the ball. Somebody who was a, a very, very important part of, of Plymouth's promotion run in the second half of last season. Brilliant at Fleetwood. Hasn't quite been given the opportunity at Sunderland yet, but we're looking at a loan deal for somebody who is ready to kick on. He's 22. He's now available. He's fully fit. I'm really excited about this signing. I'm really excited. He loves about the BK. Signing. Does he? Yeah, he loves well, the BK. Because you know a lot about him, don't you? I said earlier. So the December, right, we beat, I think we beat Gillingham at home. Right, go to a club after the game. I don't know why I did. I, I thought, oh, that would be a good idea. And he's in there. I, thought, was he? I think he was in there with Shaden Morris. Shaden Morris and him left the next window. Shaden Morris went to Aberdeen, never really done anything. I uh, never really thought Shaden was that good, to be honest. And Jay, we always knew he'd, he'd be leaving for a championship club, realistically, or, or a good league one club. And I got a picture with him, you know, spoke to him, and, you know, really good guy. And, Put on my Twitter account. Next morning, he goes, he goes, and he goes, oh, he asked me to delete. Oh, wait, you, you, the gaff, I didn't know he was out. So I thought, crap, delete. And I, I thought, well, I might, I could have costed his like multi million pound move to Sunderland, you know, good wage. And I thought, just because I got a picture with him inside a club. So, um, you know, Matete, um, yeah, he does like a yellow card, but he's a good, good, he's a very good player. Jake, it's a loan move. To, sorry, it's a, a few questions over this. It's a loan move uh, from Sunderland. It's not a permanent move. It's it's definitely on loan. But that's what you would expect. Um, yeah, not me complaining. By the way, it's, it's a bit of confusion in there about it's a permanent or it's a loan. We've been good for permanence this this uh, window with Will Goodwin with uh, Owen Dale. This is a loan deal from Sunderland and loan or permanent. It is a position that as the fans, it was a big priority. We didn't think we were going to get it done because we thought striker or striker or striker or striker was the number one for deadline day. We've gone and got this midfielder. I am over the moon by it. And Jake keeps talking about him because it's exciting me. Yeah. Jay Matei is at one hell of a sign. And by the way, that... Hello. That got done very quickly. I'm so impressed at how quickly that ended up on the stream. Um, yeah, no, I think it's uh, I think it's brilliant. 
I think it's a brilliant move. You can you saw last season how he went into this Plymouth side and and whilst they had a, a lot of momentum, he continued that momentum at such a high level and was pivotal. You know, you think about the box to box winner. I sort of compare him, Wardy, to um, a Pantouche Kamara type midfielder from the, the year before. He's good. He looks good. He, he, he looks good. very good. <laughs> um, he, he's yeah. good football, that one there. And, and you know what as well? Matete has also been given a bit of a chance in the in the championship. He's played a bit of first team football for Sunderland. You know, did he's not. Really, did he get a look in though? Not as much as he would have wanted, no doubt. But he's still. I think he's still made a handful of appearances for for Sunderland. You have to remember. Someone's saying, "Here we go for Lincoln." I do apologise. Um, Why you do that? I'm going to. He loves his Lincoln, didn't he? Oh, he's like, oh, Lincoln, Lincoln, off we go. Oh, it's two two deals. But I'm right. Ignore that, Jay Matete. Um, looking for oh, Jay McGra- Oh, McGrandos. I hope it isn't. But um, yeah, it's Kieran Sadler. Uh, it, it's Kieran Sadler. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so there. Conor McGrandos is coming back. Thoughts on that? He's moved. Oh. He's, he's moved up north. Went well. Oh, I, I, I don't. I don't. Oh, I don't know. He prefer not to speak. I'm not happy with that. But um, uh, he made. Um, he made about ten appearances in the championship. Yeah. Um, he got injured for a period of time as well. While Jake um has an I'm orgasm on stream. I've, I've, um, oh. well, it's the opposite, isn't it? Well, actually, it's not. It was. It was, and then it was just out of there. If you were, um. Let's move on from Oxford. I don't quite know what that means. And, and Lincoln City, yeah, have now just put their teaser video out. So that is going to happen. They were, they are doing business. They are awake, Jake. Don't worry. Um, <sighs> let's take a look at some of the other Go teams. Back to sleep, Lincoln. I want to speak about. I want to speak about Reading because they're really, really interesting. We're speaking about lots of incomings. At Reading Nappers. It's it's really difficult. A team down there with you, um, but a side that have had probably. I mean, we've been very, very heavy on on signings and teams doing good business reading out of their control have probably had the worst and i'm not going to spoil it tomorrow but i will the worst window um they've not lost nibs not lost smith lost not 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 lost savage in terms of not losing key players you know i think that i think that what let's be honest i think they would have expected to lose them so i don't think that they've had a bad win in terms of, yeah i know they lost nelson abbey and um, they've lost other big names as well you know um you show that Sorry, not Michael McIntyre, Tom McIntyre. It's, it's the video, it confuses me a little bit. I oh, lo- um, love that. And um, But for me, I think I don't think they've had a bad window. They haven't obviously been able to strengthen as much as they would like, but I still think Reading will be within a fight of, of you know of safety. I suppose with the the, the, the uh, departure of Tom Holmes to, to Luton, they got a good fee, whether or not they see any of that money, let's be honest, I'm not sure. They have got him back until the end of the season. Maybe I'm slightly harsh on that. The, probably, the reason why I say it is because a lot of teams, like I mentioned earlier, have actually strengthened. Um, and, and obviously with Red Reading, they haven't been able to for lots of different reasons. It could get much worse. I think it probably is going to get much worse. I think Smith Nibs and Savage, I think Wing, these are the type of players. I think Vickers is another one. We're talking about players that they've got to keep hold of. If they lose just one of those, I think they're down. There's not many teams, I don't think, that are in that relegation chat. There's not as many as there has been in previous seasons. So they're up against a bit of a fight down there. Um, Lewis has asked for our our, our Bolton additions. We'll, We'll come on to that in a minute. We're going to go near the end of the window or closer to the end of the stream, we're going to go through club by club and we'll discuss everybody. Don't worry about that. Um, we're sort of just picking up bits and pieces. As it goes, it's still quite live. I mean, it's all live, isn't it? But quite live in the transfer nice. window. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that, but we'll go for every single club. Don't worry. Cause I'm fully aware there's clubs we haven't mentioned. Blackpool's one of them. Um, and like I said, we have touched on Bolton briefly, but we can go into definitely more detail. Uh, Tom, you've uh, you're, you're raising your eyebrow. Anything? Yes, uh, two things. The the attire has not gone down very well with the audience tonight. And everyone's go- no, a no, couple of people no. have mentioned that we're quite dapper, but the uh, overall, For I think sure. it's been relatively negative reviews. Uh, the other thing I wanted to jump in on is just just kind of discuss this this Reading situation, and I take a bit of a closed minded look at it from the Tom McIntyre arrival. Um, but he's spoken to local Pompey Press in the last 24, 48 hours about how bad things really were at Reading um, with regards to, to his departure. He, he spoke about sleepless nights in terms of getting the deal over the line and and, and the, the issues that they had. You know, there, there wasn't 
know, there wasn't. He, 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 it's very rarely that a player comes out and and has such a damning indictment of a club that let's not forget he's he supports and has done since he was a boy and has been at Reading. He's a a one club man before he arrived at Pompey, but it, it was a pretty damning indictment. It, it, you know the, the discussions in the press and the media about the the players not properly having meals provided for them. The all the the kind of the off field issues spilling over onto the pitch. His words were how what a badly run football club that is and how desperately it needs to change. There are obviously Reading fans that are completely up in arms. I know there's a little bit of ongoing um, of, a, of a fracard, shall we call it, between Pompey and Reading fans in terms of the pay up Pompey, Pompey pay up all those years ago. Um, we have got a, a Fleetwood incoming that we're going to, I'm going to try and be as quick on the pulse as I was with the previous Oxford incoming with the, the graphic for you, Napa, so you can talk with a reference point. Um, but the... Uh, yeah, the, the bottom line for me with, with the Tom McIntyre deal, there obviously was a lot of Reading fans kind of saying, oh, you know, boyhood club, what a what a way to leave it. Um, he's going for his wife and kids, new, newborn baby, new dad, wants to secure a financial future for himself. I know I'm saying that from this side of the blue line in terms of a Pompey fan, and I'm absolutely buzzing because we'll get to him later in the show perhaps, but Jake's told me of his championship quality that he sees in him in terms of McIntyre. I know you boys will, will probably have quite a lot to say on him later on as well, um, or we could even have that discussion now, but I'm absolutely delighted by uh, the arrival of him. Um and uh, yes, I, I I should also say on Reading as well that there were uh, initial rumours regarding Charlie Savage and Lewis Wing, which you boys will have seen. I'm led to believe from uh, reliable people that the uh, the Pompey interest was never really there, and that was a little bit of hearsay. Uh, the only really firm a bit of interest was that the uh, Tom McIntyre has been knocking around since sort of late December. Um, the uh, Moxon news, oddly, was something that has been ongoing throughout the whole of January, really, as well, which has been kept rather quiet. And it's only really been the last sort of couple of days to a week where we've actually learned the full extent of the interest there. Uh, good evening to you all. Five minutes to ten. Welcome along to 4-0, uh, 4-0 Transfers Live. Transfer Deadline Day Live. Well, it's partly 4-0 Transfers Live, but it's also partly the, the T-Lot boys in, enjoying themselves. There's still well over 300 people joining us. It's been a fantastically consistent number. Uh, please do stick with us. We're having a great yeah. time. Um, yeah, can I have a cup of tea, Harris, please? I'll open the door. Cheers. Oh, yes, yeah. of course. That's uh, Harris that he lives in slash with, as maybe T-Lop listeners will remember that little bit of a um, misstep. I'm, 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 I'm not joking, laugh. mate. I'm not joking. I could really do have a hot drink. So if you uh, don't mind making me a cup of tea, that'd be lovely. Have you got a mug? You can put it in. Have you got one? I feel like we're on a phone call here. I, this is this is everyone's listening to this, but it's really helpful having someone who you is literally next door watch. I mean, this is working out great for me. Ben, if you want to jump in, your mic is muted. Yeah, sorry, I forgot I did that. Sorry? Um, yeah, two minutes, four minutes of signing. So hopefully, happy days. I wonder what it is. Yeah, we've got a double T lop announcement at, t- at 10 o'clock. Well, we don't know Woo! who the Fleetwood one is. We do know who the Lincoln one is. Well, we do know who the Fleetwood one is. It's, it's Gavin Kilkenny from Bournemouth. Oh, right. Okay, we do know it. That's is. the one that we knew about a couple of days ago. How crap is it, though, when you know about all these signings, like three days in front? It's like... Yeah, I, I that's why I love like... the Mateta deal, because I had no idea about an hour ago. Yeah, we were do it. the best kept secrets. I mean, do you remember when like, Danny Ings went to Villa? Like, the, that was the best kept secret ever, like... Not even his wife knew, apparently. Like, just him, he knew. Yes, please. Cheers, sorry, I just asked you about milk. <laughs> no, you, don't, you don't ask for much, do you? Christ. Room service. Wish I had the room service. I might no, shout down I want some there's, Percy Biggs. There's no one oh. here, so and I can't ask for breakfast. room service. I tell you what, if anyone from M&S is watching, we would love a sponsorship for your Percy oh, Pig range. We'll do them all. We'll do the Christmas ones. We'll do the vegan ones. We'll brand them all. Tea lot, Percy Pigs. We need to make it happen because we all absolutely love Percy Pigs. I'm not having the vegan ones, though. They can... No, the ve- the vegan ones are dodgy. I will say that. Oh, they, oh, they just started doing like one third less sugar as well. Oh, no, no, thank that. you. No, it's all, it's all. <laughs> I know we're trying to reduce our sugar and healthy eating and all that. Um, Katie's delighted on the microphones. We we all actually do have the same one, Katie. Uh, they are sure. Um, there we go. They're sure. Um, aren't they? M whatever. Um. Yes, some of us were lucky to part with less cash for them than others. But yes, no, they and are. Some fabulous of us are looking microphones. Well then. <laughs> yes, we're we're all we're all absolutely delighted that um that we've got them and we're, and we're all sounding great. I mean, it's great that we're all kind of matching for a podcast as well, aren't we? So uh, so that's all good. Uh, oh, with, cut... oh, 
I, I don't like this. For, for uh, the pe- it, for the people that don't know, Jay, provide a bit of context about the McGrandles thing, because there will be people uh, watching yeah, out there that okay, don't know so, the history. So Mag- McGrandles uh, was part of the really successful team that got to the playoff final and got beat. Um, stayed the year after, and then he left basically saying he wasn't going to sign a new contract and he wanted to go back to Scotland because his partner had been uh, had just had a baby and uh, they wanted to move back up back north, up, back home to be around family. And then a couple of weeks later, he pitched up at Charlton, um, which to me is not the uh, is not Scotland. Um, so I think he's got, if it is McGrandles, like I say, we don't know. We're going to find out shortly. Um, I think it may be. Um, in about forty-five seconds or so, um, but he'd have to—he'd have a lot to do to to win over the Lincoln fans. I think. Charlie McCann. We, uh, this is the other thing. So people think it because the club have put up a signature of, and nobody can make out who it is, whether it's McGrandles or whether it's McCann. I think it's Conor McGrandles because Richard Craw- uh, Richard Crawley, the Charlton Journal, said that McGrandles is going to Lincoln Dan, on loan. No, Dan Crowley. Dan, Dan Crowley. We're not signing Dan Crowley. No, it's the Charlton. Um, I'm trying to think of initials for you, mate. I this think is the the, I the think beauty Charlie of a li- live show is fantastic. It's, it's, um, I, I have a feeling it's going to be it's McGrandles or Charlie McCann. I don't know. It, and we're we're second. Why am I on Lincoln? Terry, but he's disappeared. Can I just say, by the way, I'm actually scoring on Lincoln Twitter instead of my here own clubs right now. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh it's McGrand. Oh, who is it? <laughs> This is brilliant live. Thanks, everybody. For with us. Oh, it's just... Conor McGrandles. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, on Sunday, I'll come on going, so happy that our club... Best win thing win. that's oh, ever happened yeah. to the football club. Yeah, brilliant recruitment oh. team. Best in the league. Our yeah. pitch is superb, by the way. Oh, I don't like it. What, Jay, out of interest, why don't you like it? We've just well, had this conversation while you're in your just doorway. because of the oh, way he left yeah, Wardy. Actually. Um, he wanted to go north and he ended up going to London. Which, uh, if you look at geography, London is a lot further south than uh, <laughs> than Lincoln, <laughs> is it? So, as a player, as a player, though, oh, he's yeah. all right as a player, but I, I, the, the difference is it's not the same Conor McGrandles that we had two years, uh, three years ago. So Why for me. Got a picture of actually kill Kenny in the kit, Nappers. Uh, because he's at Bournemouth. He's on the bench oh. tonight. <laughs> oh, right. That's Wandam. Wandam? Wandam. Yeah. Sorry, Jake. Carry on. No, I'm just disappointing. Just disappointed. <laughs> um, come on, come uh, on, Joe. Uh, You've been uh, watching the Stacey West all night. If you want to come on here, I'm going to tell you to do it a lot better. Pull your finger out and sign someone decent rather than bringing them back some has been. Honestly. Oh, well, there we go. That's the unadulterated thoughts of uh, Jake from that League One podcast on uh, yeah. the, the recently returned Conor McGrandles. Uh, ben, let's uh, let's come to you. Go and kill Kenny. Nice little addition. Very good, yeah. Um, midfield player, I believe as well. Spells at Charlton last year. Not really played much, but again, from terms of the under-21, under-23 circuit, you know, look, looks decent. Obviously, Bournemouth have got a decent relationship with them now with the um, with James Hill. I think we, we might have received a nice little bonus from them recently for James Hill playing against Liverpool, um, I think, in the transfer. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's another addition. It's, it's plugging me head. There's one more in, in half an hour, 28 minutes. So, um, yeah, good, uh, good little bit of business. Uh, Jack, we had this conversation. We were a little bit, um, not surprised is the wrong word, but we were probably quite pleased with Ben that this kind of thing was getting over the line for Fleetwood. Yes. Yeah, I do. I, I think it was one that needed to happen. I was surprised in, in, in the fact that he's gone to take this the right way, Ben. I, I think he probably could have done a little bit better than Fleetwood's league position. Not than Fleetwood. I think it's a football club with with a lot of ambition, um, maybe not so much this season, but it is a it is a player that didn't really get an opportunity at Charlton, but from what I know, when he did get that chance, he wasn't a bad footballer. Um, I also know that he was someone that I think Bournemouth were looking to potentially sell to a league one club, maybe slightly higher than, than Fleetwood. I believe this is a loan deal. I did miss that. It's a loan deal, I presume. Um, so, 
I, actually, I think it's a great signing. I think it's a really, really good signing as a play. He's a deep line playmaker, operates as a six, can also operate as, a, uh, as an eight. Um, he's somebody that comes in, can create, but it, I'd say slightly deeper than than uh, someone like Josh Vela. So he, I wouldn't say he's a replacement directly for him, but he's he, he's someone that can operate deeper and, and sort of create from from those different um, different areas, like in front of that back four. So yeah, in terms of what I think of the signing, I think it's a top top signing. I did actually, like I say, think he, he probably would go somewhere else um, in a slightly in a, in a slightly different league position, but. Yeah, you know, Fleetwood, they've got it done. And what we've seen so far is a, a real change in, in direction. They're getting rid of the older, experienced players and they're replacing them with young players that have, have got a point to prove. And right now, Fleetwood, but, but I think hopefully you agree with this. I think Fleetwood at the moment feel a little bit like a, like a free hit. These players are going to come in. They've got a lot to prove. And now we'll see what they're all about. They're not under much pressure because let's be honest, I think they probably would have got relegated either way. If they can pull off a miracle, unbelievable. But they've got a lot of a point. They've got such a, a point to prove here. Yes, Harris, I'd like to have one sugar. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Um, re- they, they have got a lot to prove, but I think for now, the playing with no pressure in terms of a, a way that everyone thinks are down. Do you have an um, exclusive, Ben? Uh, well, I'll have one hopefully soon for you. I'm on the case. Um, I've got a message my little insider. So tell me. Benicio Napmano over here, everybody. Lovely to see. Yeah. Um, it better not be who, who I've just seen been released from a, a certain League Two club because I won't be happy about that. Um, Liam McAlinden, by the way. It won't be him, though. I'm sure of that. Um, it will be him. I own it. Uh, no, I think there's no pressure on us and everything to to gain. And you know nothing to lose. We're done. For me, win as many games as you poss- as possibly can. Try and beat Blackpool if you can. Don't get relegated at Blackpool and try and keep it to the last. I think I did my predictions today, and I was down going away at late annoying, which is like the second or third to last game of the season, which won't happen. But you know, I, I don't think I don't know where, where I'd rather go down. Where, would I rather go down at home or would I rather go down away from home? I, I don't know, and so that's a sad reality when you're looking at when you know. Now, when you're thinking you're going to go down instead of if. Yeah. Um, Tom, we haven't spoken about Blackpool and Jake as well. I know you wanted to speak about George Byers. What a signing that is for, mm. for Blackpool. Um, we're speaking about a player here that was... Uh, I'm going to keep my tease here. If it is, oh. that's amazing. Um, if you are speaking about George Byers... Um, Table thanks very much. Um, here, look. There you go. You can say hello to everybody as well. Hi guys, how are we doing? There you go. Sorry, mate. Bill. Go on, Harris. How are we? <laughs> yeah, there he is. If, if you watched the deadline day stream last year, Harris was actually on it because he can was. We have a brief him. word on Exeter, Exeter. Can we have a brief, yeah, brief word, on word on Exeter? Yeah, come and chat to us about Exeter. Exeter. <laughs> the business. We'll do the business and then do the season. We accidentally unveiled a sign in earlier. That was embarrassing. Um, <clears throat> but no, some good players. I haven't lost many, which is good as well. Um, Will Ameson is free to leave if he wants. Hopefully he will. Mm. Uh, but no, happy with it. Mo Issa, oh, what player? I was interested about Issa because we were linked with him because of the Liam Manning connection. So I think that's a good striker. He's somebody that when you do get him firing... Thank you very much, Harris. That's right, mate. Yeah. See you later. See you later. Um, you, when you do get him firing... What a lovely he's chap. Actually, he's a good striker. Yeah, he's a great guy. Great guy. He's got a lovely cup of tea. Uh, before, we'll come back to Brexit, sir. But to uh, carry on with the Blackboard chat, Jake, George Byers, great addition on him from Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. Um, he showed last year at this level how, how good he can be um, in a team that got 96 points on their way to winning the playoffs. So he was a real key cog in that Sheffield Wednesday midfield unit. And I think you noticed how big a, big a loss he was when he wasn't in the team because they went on that real dip. I don't think he, he, had, he had much to do with the... Uh, with that dip in form. So, yeah, I think George Byers is a great signing. Um, add, to, add some more depth into that midfield area where they've got, you know, the likes of Norburn, um, Matty Virtue still kicking about as well at Blackpool. So, uh, we'll have to wait and see. But also, not the only player that they've brought in today. Um, obviously, uh, Dan Sassy from Burnley has joined on an undisclosed fee. I, look, I won't claim that I know loads about him. I'm just frantically trying to get my Blackpool notes up now. Um, he's joined from Burnley for an undisclosed fee. Looks like a young uh, defender. I did have other notes, didn't I? I oh, tell yeah, you what, sorry, I did... I did... it's a good job this isn't live. <laughs> it's a good job this isn't live. Um, yeah, 
One signing that, I, that I've had a chat with uh, a Blackpool fan, Callum, about uh, Ryan Finnegan has joined from Southampton, um, who, I, who I think will go under the radar, actually, uh, at Blackpool. He, he spent the first half on loan at Shrewsbury um, in a really difficult situation for his first loan. He's a creative midfielder and got rave reviews coming out of the, uh, the Southampton Academy to, to Tom. Obviously, some apologies for swearing at you, Tom. But, but... Um, dinner I, tonight as well. I think with a, a, a new home at Blackpool, I think could do really well. And then Hayden Coulson as well was a, a good pickup. He's done really well at championship level for uh, Middlesbrough. So, yeah, no, looking forward to, to to seeing how Blackpool get on for the rest of the season. They've, they've brought some big players in. Lost Kenny Dougal. He's gone to Thailand, which will be a, a, a big loss. But George Byers is definitely going to come in and fill that mould without a doubt. Wardy, anything to say on Blackpool? I think they've done, I think they've done well. I mean, I was looking at their Twitter because I was interested to see what Blackpool fans had to say about Dale leaving. Um, so that was that was interesting. And they, they were pretty honest in saying they wanted to get some bodies in. And Jake said in our chat earlier, this is a loan deal, by the way, from Sheffield Wednesday. Is that right? I don't want to get that wrong. I think it is a loan deal. Oh, Even check. if it isn't. Yes, it is. It is. Um, they would, This wouldn't have been a cheap loan. Uh, you'd imagine Sheffield Wednesday would have wanted some fee with that and a, a large chunk of his of his wages covered. They're probably looking at someone saying, oh, and Dale leaving, look, they can then cover that with the wages of, of George Byers because he will be on more money than Dale would have been. That was probably the thinking behind it. And I'm not going to steal that point. Jake said that brilliantly in the in the, in the the chat earlier about, about that maybe being a smoother transaction financially. I think George Byers comes in and is more of what Blackpool need. He's a very, very good midfielder, very, very box-to-box. I did a video on Sheffield Wednesday last season and that midfield looked so, looked so much better with Volks and, and Byers next to it. I think that that double pivot was was fantastic. They tried um, uh, Backinson there, who's now at Charlton. That wasn't as, as good. Um, they tried a few players there, but when George Byers and when uh, some Volks were together, they looked, they looked 10 times better. And then in front of them, of course, they had Barry Bannon. It was a great trio. So... I think he's a great player in League One. I'm very surprised he's, by the way, Wolves just scored a last-minute equaliser against Man United. It's 3-3 in that game. It's just come up. That's quite funny. Wow. Um, it, it, in terms of what he's going to bring to Blackpool, we know he can prove it in League One. So that there's no need to worry about that. It's exactly what Neil Critchie would have wanted. It's a, a really, really good signing. And you know what? A lot of teams have done good signings as well. Somebody did mention this in the chat um, earlier about Johnson Clark Harris. Uh, of course, he hasn't left. Uh, Bristol Rover, uh, sorry, Bristol Rovers hasn't left Peter Bros joining Bristol Rovers. We, we'd have thought this time last year. Um, that didn't, uh, sorry, it was in some was the most summer. bizarre thing that ever happened. That it was the whole, it? yes, because he was, it was actually the night before the Pompey game, wasn't it? Or the, the yes, weekend before true. the Pompey game. They're in the hotel on Portsea Island, and then all of a sudden he was off, and then the car turned around at a service station, and, and all sorts. It was that there was an interesting storyline with that, wasn't there? Um, I don't want Nappers to to say something he doesn't want to live for whatever reason. Um, but you've you've been gesticulating quite vigorously over the last couple of minutes, Ben. And if you do want to jump in and say something, your mic's still off. Um, but what is the situation at the minute in terms of where you're standing with Fleetwood in this final, potentially final arrival of the evening? I don't know, because I've had two different <laughs> answers so far. The first one is a bit unrealistic. So it's not JCH. Don't get me excited about that. Uh, there was a rumour early in window. It's not going to be him. I'm now hearing Cameron Jerome potentially as well, which would make sense with Aaron Collins coming into the football club and local can stay. Um, so potentially, but apparently it's a striker. So I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Well, uh, we'll uh, we'll hold I fire can play on. Up front, that. So it might be me. <laughs> We'll, we'll hold on 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 that for the uh, for the time being. Um, is now about the time where we perhaps want to go around a few more clubs and and just do a few more little catch ups mm. on on what we've uh, yeah. what we've all seen over the the course of today. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll probably we, we I haven't I know we chatted Mox on at the, the start of the night and we were kind of hoping oh four three Wardy Man United uh, Kobe wow. Mainu <laughs> has scored a ninety seventh minute winner uh, which is quite fantastic. Mm. Um, we uh we did chat about Pompey briefly at the start of the window. 
Um, I just want to kind of finish up on on a couple of things there. I was expecting it to be quite a fun night. Obviously, that hasn't quite materialised. We had it on good authority during the day this afternoon that Sporting Director Rich Hughes was chasing a permanent deal of a, in quotation marks, rising talent, um, which is very much seen to be looking towards the the future of the football club um, in, in terms of not looking too much into the here and now. There was also the suggestion that this arrival would be a winger. Um, there's word on the street that it might have been a Crystal Palace under-21 player. Uh, not too sure to the extent of which that is true. Already mentioned earlier on this evening uh, that it was an incredibly aggressive window from Pompey, adding Mox onto the mix alongside uh, Pitt Harris, Lang and Macy. We've seen all three of those already in a Pompey shirt with one of them scoring what was almost the winner, which we were all absolutely gutted by. Um, I think that puts to to rest any issues of a a, a, a league position slip up, really. The word from Andy Cullen at the start of the window was very much that the aim was to finish, that our our January business would put us in a stronger position than we we are. Jesus Christ, try that again. Than we were heading into it. They've delivered on that pledge. That rising talent obviously wasn't meant to be. McIntyre, Lang, Moxon have all captained their former teams as well, Wardy. So Pompey have signed a team full of leaders. They have indeed. Uh, I think I've got a good way of, of doing this. So on Transfer Market, we can go through every single club. So we'll start in alphabetical order because we haven't touched on the first team, I don't believe, With when you're looking at the alphabetical order of, of League One, Barnsley. Um, no, they signed... Yeah, I've, I've got Josh Earl, obviously, was the, the most recent one. Um, they also signed uh, Jonathan Pines, a centre-back from DC United earlier on in the window. He hasn't yet featured for Barnsley. Um Jake, what have you made of Barnsley's window? Uh, we know we spoke about Josh Earl earlier. That Josh Earl earlier. That's not easy to say. Um, what do you make of it generally? Have they done enough, do you think, to, to push and they are in that top six at the moment, to stay in that top six? Um, difficult because you always want to strengthen while you're in a, a really good position. Um, you know, you think of Oxford. They've, they have they have strengthened this window whilst in the top six. And I think Oxford's window is a lot better than Barnsley's. Um Pines is uh, a signing that's untested over in England. You, we don't know how well he's going to get on. Josh Earl, I think, will we'll, we'll slot in. They've also let Casper um, Lapata has gone out today, hasn't he, to, to Port Vale. So that would be interesting to see how he does there. But for me, for for Barnsley, what the, the main thing was, it, making sure that none of the, the loans went back. Well, one particular loan in, in John McAtee, he was, he's been really influential for them. So keeping hold of him, you know, past deadline day today has been massive, um, but the, the, the Barnes's windows fill me with a lot of jo- a lot of joy. Not really. Um, I think that I think they've got a good enough squad as it is anyway. They they didn't need to add loads and loads in, but they've added where they thought they needed to strengthen, and um, they've kept hold of key players as well. Luke O'Connell, like I mentioned, and, and, and John McAtee, and Devante Cole also hasn't gone anywhere. He's scored a, a load of goals this year. So sometimes in a transfer window, we're also you know, fascinated on who's coming in and who's the next one to come in, etc. But sometimes it really is about who stays and who you can keep at your football club. And for me, but this Barnsley window has epitomised a good window because they've kept all the key assets. Yeah, I think it'd go down as a as a a fine window. It doesn't sound, you know, it's absolutely it's fine. They haven't lost anyone. They've added a player here and there. I'm not over them. You know, I'm not blown away by it. I don't think any. Uh, Barnsley fans are over the moon with the window, but they are probably happy for the most part. Um, I know we spoke about Bolton, um, but we'll come back to them. I know we've got to speak about every club and we will do that as well as Blackpool in just a second. But Bolton, um, Nappers with Bolton, they're in a good, good in a good place. We know with their games in hand, they could be, you know, top of the table, um, but they're in a, in a really, really good place. And they're playing some, some good football on a good run at the moment. Um, Calvin Ramsey on loan from Liverpool. I mean, last time, uh, they got a player on loan from Liverpool uh, that was a right back. Did all right, didn't he? Certain Connor Bradley. Um, Calvin Ramsey this time is is on loan from from Liverpool at Bolton, along with, um, of course, Aaron Collins, who you can see on the screen now as well, and Ogbita, and of course, Taylor, who he also mentioned. But generally, to summarise Bolton's window, I think it looks like that's going to be it for Bolton. But I say that in a way that <laughs> that's absolutely fine from a rival perspective. I think they've done uh, enough. They've had a great window. Uh, ben, to summarise on that. Yeah, great window. The January window for Bolton in the last three years have been nothing short of phenomenal. Um, you know, brought midfield plays in, brought forward plays in, brought defensive plays in, and just added and freshened that squad up as well. And the, the loans they brought in this year, you know, I think Magoma has been has got better. 
will be uh, has got better and better, you know, throughout his career as well. And it's a it's a good signing as well. You know, Collins on a permanent deal. It's a saucy signing, and it's a really really good team. And Ian Everett's a really good manager, and Ian Everett has basically done. We you know what Jurgen Klopp has done at Liverpool, but you know, in four or five years there, you know, he's done an unbelievable job. I did tough at the beginning. Has gone through that rough patch, won promotion, stabilised, playoff push last year. That was the best thing that happened to them last year, losing in those playoffs, because they weren't ready. This year, they are ready now, and they are here to make up the numbers. I always say three seasons, ninth, playoffs, go up. That'd be unbelievable. And then it's stay up, consolidate, push on, top, top kind of 12, and then the, you know the, the the rest is history. I think this Bolton side can uh, really push on. You know uh, next season as well. Tom, we uh, sorry, he's talking to to I believe his father. Is he believe? Is it Andrew? Is that an Andrew? Uh, is no, that it's not Andrew? Andrew. No, you boys know, oh. but it's not. No, hang on, give me. Come back to me. I'll come back. To, I'll go to Jake actually on this. Um, Burton Albion. Burton Albion. We, we spoke about uh, Burton in the summer because we thought their business was absolutely brilliant. I mean, two of the strikers they brought in, Cole Stockton and Gordon, have actually left during this January, so it hasn't quite worked out for them. They replaced them with plenty of loans. You look at their market, it's loan, loan, loan. Hugo, Bola, Adabomi, Leco, the six foot giant, uh, Kyle um, Hudlin, also Hackford from Sheffield United has joined on loan as well. They've mm. definitely used the loan market, Burton Albion. I think the idea there is to make sure that they're secure and ready to stay in the league. Of course, we're not looking at maybe the long term with Burton Albion, but it's a sign of a club using that loan market effectively. And you look at geographically where we're talking about, I think Man United um, have spoken a few times about how they like to use Burton as a loan market. Palace also a club in there, Sheffield United. We're talking about established Premier League clubs, which is a, a good sign for Burton Albion. Um, but Jake, how do you make of them? We haven't spoken about Burton yet. It's been a, a busy window, especially in the loan department. Yeah, no, it has. Uh, and you, well, they've brought in six loanees this this window and you can only have five in a match day squad. So that's yeah. going to be interesting that that one of these are going to have to miss out every week. And, um, you know, you look It's at... going to be Leco that misses out because he's out for the rest of the season. Is he? Yeah, he's uh, injured. So he, got... he only signed out the other day. I know, he got injured in training or something. Oh, well. well season long are. injury. Um, it's not well... a season long loan for him. Well, I, well, yeah. There you uh, go. Then they're your five players. That's what they're putting there you in. There's your five lines. Yeah. No, Ignore that know. last thirty seconds, viewers. On we go, Jake. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was really impressed by Joe Hugo when he when he made his debut at, at Pride yeah, Park. Obviously, he scored a really good goal. Um, I think in the win over Charlton as well. He made one for Mark Kelm as well. So he's settled in life well at, at the Pirelli. Um, I know if Hancock's watching, he's a big. Adam Ola, Ola, Adi Bommy fan. Uh, he's scored hatfuls for for Crystal Palace in the under twenty ones. There, um, I think I think he's a, a good profile. Kyle Hudlin, someone that that came through at Solihull Moors and had a loan spell at Wimbledon, but he's six foot nine. He's an absolute yeah. unit. He, you know, it's wow. very obvious what Burton are, are going to try and do there with with Hudlin. Um, Bowler is is a decent son. I think he's done it at this level before. He's come in from Rotherham. I don't know a lot about this Antoine Ackford fellow that they brought in from Sheffield United today. He's not someone that I know loads about. But you look at the names that they've lost. Um, Bez Labala, Cole Stockton, Josh Gordon, Josh Walker, Charlie Lakin. And Quado Barr also got recalled, which is, which is a big loss because he's done really well for them. He was unreal. Uh, in the first half of the season. So, um, yeah, it's... It's I think they, what they've done is they've like they've looked to the players they've sent out on loan. You look at Cole Stockton, you look at that weirdly. He was he was a he wasn't good enough for Burton, and that's why they've got rid of him. I think in terms of their squad itself, are they in a better place as a squad? I think they probably are, to be honest. I mean they they look they look they look better. They have got players there that that have got a point to prove. Cole Stockton did it did it at Morecambe, then yeah. went to Burton. Great signing, hasn't worked out. They've got players now that are young and hungry, and yeah, their loan deal was, but it definitely should be enough to keep them up. I think. Yeah, yeah, and, and we, you know, Burton were they weren't toothless, but they they weren't very good going forward in terms of scoring goals and creating chances in in games. It was very rare for them to score more than one goal a game. And now you look at the the different options they've got up there with Hudlin, Adibomi, Joe Hugo. Um, you know, um, they've got some different types of strikers that they can utilise for for different situations. So um, I think from a Burton point of view, you'll be you'll be looking forward to it and. Uh, 
I can let you know, Alberts, and go on uh, the next tee lot ward because that's where we are on Saturday. And I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait for that insight. Um, Blackpool were the, the next team. We, we missed that Blackpool by accident. I say by accident. I almost I avoided it because we, we've touched on it quite a lot and I wanted to go to Bolton. But um, yeah, Blackpool will come to... Uh... We don't even need to go to Bolton as, as again, do we? No, no, no. We've done Bolton. So I said oh, we've we have done. done. Oh, I see. I did, Sorry. Um, that's why I skipped to Bolton instead of going to Blackpool. Cool. Um, also, I've got a bit of news for you. Oxford United uh, deals are done. Oh, so uh, no oh, more no more on that. So uh, we can go to bed. Two out of the four out the running for the night, boys and girls. We still have and to be honest with you, flanking us. People will sort of go, oh, but it wasn't a striker on the list. If you'd have told me a striker or a midfielder, I would have said a midfielder over a striker simply because we've got Will Goodwin in and we've got Harris. We've got a player that I think we needed more. So um, over the moon with that. Let's move away from Oxford. Um, Nappers, you, you give, there's a look between Nappers and Jake. Is there something we should know? Is this a break no, it's, deal? It's the, um, it's the way that Fleetwood have, have announced the uh, uh, other cut army still awake. And it's um, the fellow who does the mic in Jim's boss. His name, Nappers. Maybe. Bimmy. He just goes, oh, hello. It, uh, honestly, you met Bimmy. A support been... liaison geezer. Yeah, if yeah. you've been to Jim's bar, you know what I mean? He's like, he's genuinely such a cracking bloke. Oh, oh hello. He did He did that video. Do you remember when they played um, Blackpool and all the, the Blackpool, like, they're all saying, oh, we need you to get down to Ivory um, and buy tickets. And all everyone was rinsing them. But I thought that was brilliant. Bimmy is what such a great bloke. Bimmy, and... not Bimby. <laughs> But no, Bibby. Yes, that's what yeah. I said. It's his Lincoln to your accent, Ben. You can hardly understand. Oh, he's he's the best accent name. in the world, bro. Oh, at the end of the best <laughs> accent in the best county. <laughs> at the of end all of the... them. The Come end on, of the, the Shire. You make, <laughs> the best, you, make, you make the best sausages, remember? We do. Best pitch. Best, best food team. in the division at home. Best, best transfer Best media <laughs> team. Best media team. I, I'm going to get that one out there. Whilst, Jake, uh, whilst not, don't, don't twerk, mate. They're not going to give you a job. <sighs> They ought to, though. If you're watching, fabulous gentleman over here. He doesn't get. He doesn't get seventy two. Doesn't get paid enough here. Um, Tom, we'll come to you on on Blackpool. Finnegan was signed. Uh, Colson was signed. By, uh, by I don't know we, we mentioned uh, Blackpool. They are pushing for that top six. Do you reckon yep. they've done enough in that January window to uh, secure that spot? They've got to chase a little bit, but in terms of players they've lost. The biggest one probably is Owen Dale. Other than that, they're not too worried. And Jason Weir ending his line, he didn't do too much at Brighton. He's gone back out somewhere else. So uh, they're not going to be poor there. They're not going to be too concerned about that. He didn't really rip up any trees. But in terms of incomings and their squad now, they've got a chase on their hands. What do you think? Thank you very much to Son Jo for uh, describing us as professional. That doesn't happen too oh, often. Geez. So thank you very much indeed Jesus for that wild. bit of a push there. Um, yes. So the the good news about Blackpool situation is obviously without lo- losing the 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 Owen Dale thing for me is it's a bit of a strange one really is the I I wasn't expecting him to go out really I wasn't expecting him to leave I wasn't thinking that that was going to be the case and the 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 other thing is you know you you just kind of sat there thinking well, well why was it a player related thing because he was playing games wasn't he Owen Dale and it's it's not like he kind of wasn't inter in their plans um have we got some Charlton news Jake I think it's Todd Kane I'm not overly sure it's the Kane meme that Griezmann did it's the Kane yeah it's the Kane meme unless they're going to announce Nathan Jones but I think it it might be. Well, I can't imagine it'd be Herbie Kane. Surely he's not going to leave Barnsley. No, it won't be that. I imagine Todd Kane has left. I think he's been in Gibraltar. He's been at Man- Charlton. He was at Charlton last season, Todd Kane. So it, it could be. He didn't really do very well there. He's injured the entire time. Well, they have just let a midfielder go, haven't they? Uh, he also can play right back. Yeah, yeah we were Randall's we were replacing him with Randall. Window. There, there was um there was news uh, and I don't know if if you boys are, are interested that Dan Hargreaves tweeted out he's the um Rovers the Bristol Rovers one he he was saying that Bristol Rovers had gone for um Niall Ennis they had tried to sign Niall Ennis on loan from Blackburn but he's opted to go elsewhere so that would be interesting to see where he ends up just to to finish up on Blackpool, I think the the George Byers arrival is the kind of thing that would propel you towards those playoff positions. I think he, he brings an awful lot of of firepower and quality. I didn't quite hit the heights that he did at Sheffield Wednesday. Um, sorry, did hit the heights at Sheffield Wednesday. He didn't quite do that at Portsmouth when he was with us, albeit it wasn't in a fantastic team. And it was a kind of a lockdown season that we saw the majority of his football for us. So uh, not uh, 
not unbelievable in terms of that, but also, you know, I just I think with Blackpool the the away form for me has left them with a bit of a mountain to climb. I think if they can turn that round for the last couple of games this season, I know it's ironic of me to say, given that we were on the receiving end of a four 0 thumping to them, um, but that's one of their sort of handful. You can count on the, on your hand really their away wins away from home this season, Blackpool. So, um, yeah, what one to keep an eye on? If there was any team that were to push to make the playoffs that aren't currently in the conversation, I would probably say it would be Blackpool. Nappers, we're going to skip. We'll come back. I'm, I'm looking at the teams that we haven't spoken about at all during these uh, two and a half hours. So I know we, we haven't spoken about Bristol. Ro we have spoken about Rovers and we are missing them alphabetically. We're going to come to Cambridge with you, Nappers. Um, Lyle Taylor has joined the football club with Gibbons today, along with McCulley Bond, reuniting, of course, with um, Neil Harris, who he signed yeah. uh, with Gillingham. Cambridge United, Thoughts on their window? No real departures, an end of a loan for, yeah. um, uh, for uh, Kamani Gordon, who's gone down to League Two. But Cambridge United, enough to stay in the league? Uh, yeah, they've improved. They've improved massively uh, in my eyes. You've got a goal scorer now. You've got a bit of pace. You've got a bit of power, a bit of experience. I think Cambridge will get between 53 and 57 points, which will be enough, which will be a good season. Um, I think it'll look tighter down in the bottom area. I think it'll be between 46 and 48 points. And uh, Cambridge have improved. And uh, I think that's mainly down to the manager as well. I think um, I actually, talking to Mark Bonner, I was actually, well, I was waiting for Phil, uh, Phil Catchpole at Wickham, who's one of the best in the business, by the way. Really, really good guy. I saw him, I was listening to Gab's episode with Mark Bonner, saying he's been to a lot of League One, a lot of League Two, a lot of Championship games. And because I thought, oh, he's, he's based around there. And he walked into the director's box. I thought, well, Mark Bond is here. So I um, saw Mark Bonner the other day. So uh, How is he? Well, I, miss I, thought, I really miss him. How is he? Right? Yeah. I thought, well, I thought, well, if he's here, I thought James Alcott might have to walk in next to him. I thought, well, what he might, you know, be, you know. What about I'm Barry Bannon? Away. Was he nearby? <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, he's so good, Barry Bannon. He is good. Uh, Callum Light is, now. From the video. Oh, mate. He is. Uh, Different I, class, that yeah, boy. We'll, we'll talk about that. Go and watch the video on Callum Lang. I've done two videos on Callum Lang. Um, he are... is a closet Pompey fan, as many people have assumed. That is the, I can confirm those rumours. Just saying. I want to say uh, something. We, but I'm not we say expect it. that. World Cup winning wing back joins town. Oh. Defender. Imari Samuels. <laughs> Here we go. This will be fun. Zooming Imari. on Nappers trying to pronounce I -M -A -R -I. his name. I M A R I. Callum Styles gone to Sunderland from Barnsley. Ayamari, Ayamari, Imari Samuels has joined the club on loan from Brighton. It's a long old right trip. Uh, it's uh, Ramsey. Um, for the rain, rain, rains at Reading. Played thirty-eight times. The fullback. What position is he? Right or is he left? Why you look at that? Let's um. Let's go somewhere else. By the way, I think the reason why Styles has left Barnsley for Sunderland, the reason why we've got Matete, we speak about domino effects. That seems yeah. to be one of them. Um, I don't think it is Todd Kane, unless I'm Kane Ramsey being... from Harrogate, the right back. That makes oh, sense. We'll come to Charlton now then, because I'm going to skip Carlisle. Do we, do we have spoken about Carlisle? No, we'll come we've to Carlisle. We've spoken about Carlisle today. We yeah. have spoken about Carlisle, I think, quite a lot. We haven't really touched on Charlton too much. They've been very, very busy. Um, they have just uh signed uh came from from harrogate town um <coughs> Connor coventry joined the football club uh i'm not gonna name all of them Freddie the dapo um assigned as well back in the they, they signed a lot of players of course without even having a manager in charge um tom charlton nathan jones of course spoke about the manager situation looking purely at their transfers They've gone down the, the League One EFL proven route. Uh, a lot mm -hmm. of players here that have, have done well in the EFL over the last couple of years. But in terms of uh, trying to recruit without a manager, that makes things slightly a little more com uh, complex. Yeah, it's, it's bizarre. It's, it's recruitment that that sort of signifies to me that there's a you would expect if you weren't looking at the league table that Charlton would be mounting some kind of playoff or promotion charge. Edmonds Green, you know... Stealing Lewis Ward from from Swindon Town, Fiorini, Ladapo. You've mentioned Backington there. I know Jake's not a massive fan of the Charlton recruitment, and we'll get into that in a moment. Um, oh, <laughs> he's a right that? back. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> that's a clip for Twitter later. That's the that's the reaction of the night. That is what we wanted. Oh, he's a right uh, yeah, back. Uh, you're uh, you're right. Gilles, uh, Macaulay Gillespie's twenty eight. You know, Lewis Ward, 25, Evans Green, 25. Sorry, Lewis Ward, 26, Evans Green. Um, 
So I tried to squeeze a lot of words out there very quickly. It's 25. Uh, Ladapo, I don't, Ladapo's in his 30s now, so uh, I'm, I'm not sure. And I, I'm, I'm not, not really thinking he's absolutely set the world alight in his first couple of games, but lo- long way to go in terms of his... Uh, well, I suppose he's only on loan, isn't he, from Ipswich? But long way to go in terms of his Charlton life, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I, I, f- I find it bizarre. We'll go to Jakey because he, he will probably give you a bit more of a, an extreme opinion on it. But I, I don't see the the joined up thinking, perhaps. And, and obviously, Charlton are entitled to go for the, the targets. They identify as a, a director of football, head coach kind of model that they're looking for. But it, it doesn't look like it's best suited to a, an incoming manager to hit the ground running, hit the ground cold and also not be in exactly the best league position they'd want to be. Mm. The, it, the recruitment just looks like it, it, it's recruiting for all different styles and systems, which... I can sort of imagine people, you know, you might say that for flexibility, that would be a a good thing. But when you're trying to, when you're trying to sort something, you know, with a philosophy in mind, which they were trying to do under Appleton, and they probably are better off doing going down the young head coach route. And I'm sure we'll get have a teal up extra on that in the in the coming weeks and whatever it is. But I don't know. It, it, they've spent a lot of money. They, they panicked. There was a whole lot of room around Clark Harris uh, and he was clearly the number one target in terms of they went after him. They, it looked like reportedly, according to the, the chart on journals, that they provided a, a very good contract. And uh, Darren McCanting, I think, has backed that up on on his podcast and said it was a good deal for Jono and he decided not to take it. And from that moment on, I just feel that all the recruitment that Charlton have done just looked panicked. You know, it's like, how can I give you an, an analogy? You know, when you go into a, Let's say, do you remember all the, the hype around Prime, right? <laughs> yeah. And you wanted to go into a shop and you wanted to get a, a, like the new flavour of Prime, right? And you panicked and then you saw the other Primes are on the shelf, the ones that you've maybe disregarded and maybe thought, you know what, well, we don't, don't really want them, but we'll have them because it's Prime and it looks really cool. Um, let's get all them. Uh, and to me, it, it looks a bit like that. I mean, at one point they were linked with... Uche Piazza at Port Vale, who's not torn up any trees at Port Vale, who was at fifth bottom of the table. So, look, I can see individually that some of the players are quality. Look, Connor Coventry has been got to the playoffs in this division before. He's won a Europa Conference League. Uh, Romani Edmonds Green has got a promotion with, Ro- with Rotherham on his CV. Fiorini's been decent at this level with, with Lincoln before. Freddie Ladapo scored 15 goals last year. Tari Backinson has been promoted. I can see what they're trying to do. But it, it, it just looks like you've got spag ball in one part of your plate, fish and chips on the other. You've got um I don't right, know. Neville. You do know what I mean? It just it just looks like a he's, he's not on day 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 day. Yeah. Yeah. as well. It, it's Has good. anyone ever been to Cosmo? No, yeah, Cosmo. Yeah, yeah. I won it, actually had to close down because it had rats. But I've been... ah, well, maybe they've got a rat on the plate as well, Warden. Yeah. Um it Maybe just looks like a mix of everything, and it, it, it's not something that fills me with a lot of confidence. But if they can get Nathan Jones in, that that might well, you know, make me a bit more bullish on Charlton. But yeah, no. we need to rattle through teams. Yeah. By the way, uh, by <laughs> the way, there's yeah, we've got uh, we're we're in Yon C. There's <laughs> plenty more to come. Um, by the way, we've got 101 people watching on mine. If my math is right, that means we've got 100 and how many on yours? 103 on mine. If you hover your cursor over the 291 right. at the top of your screen, you can see Wardy. Oh, I, oh, okay. Ooh, I should have He's only learned that two hours, two and a half and hours in. Minutes, um, 103 on mine, 183 on yours. If you could leave a like, I'm on 80 likes. To get over 100 on both of them, you might, you probably already hit 100 likes. I think you probably have. Um, have. Um, leave a like, whether you're on 100 or not. But if you, uh, by the way, uh, John Palmer coming on to Cheltenham now, still not done at Cheltenham. So we're going to, we'll go, we'll, should we go, we'll come back to Cheltenham when they're done. That makes more sense, doesn't it? Um, Derby, we've touched on. There isn't much more to say. Corey Beckett Taylor Adams has joined the football club. No departures of note. Harris did give us some insight into Exeter. Um, I think we, we could touch on that briefly. I think Ali from Halifax is a really, really good, uh, exciting, more raw option. But I think he comes in to fix that Exeter mould. He, he's definitely um, an interesting one. Ben Parrington, a left back from from Ross County, is that experience and again that Scottish connection with Gary Caldwell as their manager. Um, Moisa on, on the loan from MK Dons hasn't worked out at MK Dons this season, but a proven striker in in League One. He's twenty nine. You get him firing, that could be massive. Ryan Woods joined on loan from Hull City. Um, 
that one was that one was interesting because he hasn't actually been fantastic uh, since the the Ginger Perlo title that he was given quite a few years ago now. Uh, but that's a loan deal from Hull City uh, in terms of mobility, maybe not up there. Experience for Exeter at this point in the season that could be huge. Um, di- are you laughing at Dylan's comment, uh, Nappers? I yeah. think he is. Yeah. Don't turn this off for the darts. There's plenty more still to come. Um, in terms of departures, no real ones to know other than Trevor being recalled by Brentford, but he did have an injury. Um, we'll come back to Fleetwood. Is that business all over, actually, at Fleetwood, Nappers? We can wrap up, Fleetwood. Um, I just got told don't go to bed, so... Yeah. Okay, no then. We'll come back to Fleetwood later on. Um, we believe Leighton Orient is done. Uh, Jake on Leighton Orient, or Tom, you choose. We'll go to Jake on this one, and then Tom, you can take over on Lincoln. That'd be my, that'd be quite interesting. Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's hear your thoughts, Jake, on on Leighton Orient. We spoke earlier about um, Ollie O'Neill from Fulham as a, as yeah. a good addition, uh, but Leighton Orient, I'd say in the similar brackets in Northampton really haven't needed to recruit fantastically because as a newly promoted side, they've done a great job, but they've added to a good squad already. Yeah, I think Orient, uh, as I'm drastically trying to find my Orient note. Yeah. Um, obviously, they brought back Brandon Cooper, haven't they, who was on loan at the, um, for the first half of the season. I thought he's performed pretty, pretty admirably um, in that part of the back three. Um, he's been good at this level before. And then Ollie O'Neill is someone that, if, you, you know, if you're big on your Premier League two um, and you're, you're sort of young players uh, in that sort of division, then Ollie O'Neill is someone that has st- stood out for... For years, um, he's a fantastic technical midfielder. Fulham had high hopes for him. I, I can't imagine Fulham would have wanted to to have let him go. Um, he's somebody that I think were, had they had plans for in the first team. But you have to admire his uh, dedication to go out and get you know first team football at, at Leighton Orient. So they have lost Drinnen today, I believe, as well. He's and, gone and the, to... the the defender as well. Yeah, uh, Ed turns. Yeah, he's gone to clear, yeah. isn't he? Um, but yeah, it, it's been a good window, I think, for Orient. They they didn't need a lot. You know, you look at the, the league table, they sat 10th in, in, in Sky Bet League One, a really good season for, for Orient if they can finish there. Um, but, you know, they, they, they've got the likes of Dan Adji coming into the team now. You've got Idris El Mazzouni performing to a high level, Ralph Satoru mm-hmm. as well. So um, I think I think Orient can be happy with their business. They're, they're just adding to what they've already got. And, you know, O'Neill and, and Cooper will, will, will certainly do that. I've just had a thought. We'll come back to Lincoln at the end because we believe they're not done. And we'll summarise when we say our goodbyes um, on the clubs that we support. Um, Northampton, I think we've touched on. No more business there. I'm being told Bristol Rovers are about to sign somebody. They put the... So the are they okay? Uh, <laughs> lightning, lightning emoji for Bristol Rovers as well. I'm not quite sure who that could be. They haven't been very uh, well, they haven't really That's given us too much on that front. We'll wait and see. Um, Peter Breton, not much to say on that. We've we touched on it, we haven't touched on the uh, loan signing of let's give this a go. Michael Alabi, Ala, oh dear, Michael Alagabi. Oh, give Ooh. that a go. Nappers, I'm not coming to you, mate. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, Michael, he's on loan from Brett, he's a winger. And I think the, the general consensus of Peterborough is that I thought that they might go with a fullback because Kyos has gone back to uh, to Rotherham. They've gone with a I, winger. Can I, I go know. with Michael Ola Kigbe? You, you're, yeah, you. Can. That's the most can convincing go? pronunciation. Right. No, 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 Peterborough. Yeah. Okay, wait there. <laughs> right, while he looks at how to pronounce the name, Tom. Not Apparently, it's Ola There, there we, we go. go. Um, not not a huge amount of business, but we spoke earlier about keeping hold of their assets. Peter, to summarise, looks like it's going to be uh, the window shut for them. Good yeah. good window, all in all. Yeah, I think so. And I, I completely echo Napa's sentiment about uh, Darren McAntony being such a ruthless operator at this level. Love him or loathe him. You know, he he's very honest and open about what he does and, and how how the club operates. So I think maybe some people think to the extent is it might be a little bit too open. Maybe things are a little bit too broad at, at Peterborough and people know the ins and outs of it. Um, but yeah, no, I think, I mean, I, I reckon I got my Peterborough prediction pre-season well off the mark, if I'm honest with you. I think they are going to be right up there and alongside Bolton at this moment in time, I see Peterborough as Pompey's biggest threat to, to automatic promotion right now. I know Derby have really strengthened um, and we talk about a four horse race, but heading into these last sort of 15, 16 games, Darren Ferguson's been in before many, many times, many times at Peterborough. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot to be said for them. I think they're going to have a really exciting run in towards the end of the season and I'm uh, looking forward to seeing how it develops. So, uh, Jay, you got an update on the pronunciation? Are we going to just go with that? 
Yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah, we'll go with that. Um, so we're next up, we're going to speak about Port Vale, and it only feels right that we go to uh, <laughs> go to Nappers. Uh, they played Port Vale uh, at the weekend, and we're now going to speak about Port Vale. Um, one thing I will say with, with Port Vale, and I'm going to make sure I don't steal the point, is if you look at the teams that they've taken players off of, Forest, Man United, Liverpool, Brighton, all loan transfers, they've gone down the, the young Premier League route. One player that really stands out, and I know Williams has already gone back from Liverpool after that injury. Jensen Weir hasn't quite done it yet in League One. Daniel Gore is a massive, massive addition. Nappers, Port Vale's window. Jensen Weir did it in League One last year for Morecambe, and I kind of think Blackpool maybe was a bit of a step up. In terms of League One, he's probably gone from... You know, being a star player to being on the cuff of a squad, and you, you saw that. I actually thought he was better than a lot of the midfielders Blackpool have. One being Tash Tash Ugly Booth, who I know Jake knows a lot about. He's just been released from Blackpool. Gone to Portugal, there. mate. Yeah, what? he's gone, gone yeah, to Portugal. Yeah. What a um, boy. Uh, look, from Blackpool to Portugal in the space of 24 hours, eh? Uh, lucky boy. Um, but no, um, Jensen Weir, I think, is a good signing for, for Port Vale. And they've already got a good squad. I just think, striker-wise, they're a bit light. They should never let... And I still say the same about Fleetwood. Should never let Ellis Harrison go. And I keep saying that. Keep banging the drum about that. Um, Loth wasn't a good... I think they signed him on deadline day last time, didn't they? Because Bristol always let him go and didn't get the JCH deal over the line. Um, I think it's been a good window. They've kept the players. And again, Port Vale will be just fine. 53 to 57 points as well. They've got two games in hand. Uh, one of them are, is against us. So they've still got to play us twice. So, um, so yeah, we play Port Vale. Yeah. yeah. The final thing on Port Vale I would say as well is... Um... Let's find his name so I don't get this wrong. Um, our blaster has obviously gone back to Sheffield United. I know that was an, an injury. And Divine as um, well. And Divine. And I know it's quite funny actually in the transfer market. Reese Williams signs on the uh, tw- 31st, end of loan, February the 1st. It was a quick uh, quick visit for Reese Williams. Um, but there we go. Uh, we spoke Shoot. about Reading. There isn't too much to say on that. Uh, there was Tom. meant to be an incoming at Reading, but it's all gone quiet. They, tweet- they tweeted. Uh... 13 minutes ago that there was going to be an incoming and it's I'd expect it to call a 10 then wouldn't you one yeah. minute time maybe maybe we are ju- maybe we do want I'm refreshing the Reading page can we all just take a moment to celebrate that it was about this time one year ago to the day that the Ryan <laughs> oh. Harding news began to break <laughs> you haven't got right it saved, have you I'm really scared you're going to play it at some point no, no, it's not, mate. No, I, I wouldn't have done that to you. Don't worry, I like you a little bit more than that. So, I have done that to Mon Lewis has joined Reading from Arsenal, under 21's captain, on loan for the rest of the season. No, we didn't know about that. He was a centre half. Yeah, I forgot. We should have mentioned that earlier. I didn't know about that. Fleet would have another one coming in. <laughs> I, I, Jesus Christ. No, I don't think we do. I'm just trying to count. Five on deadline day. Yeah, Finley, Tommy, right? Tommy Lonigan, Finley yeah. Potter. Yeah, Be that right that we just still here. And love Pepe. That's it. It's four. And that lad from Everton, Campbell. Oh, five. Yeah. Campbell. There Campbell. Samuels. Tommy. Why you learn to count to five, Nappers? We'll move on. Who's um, club? <laughs> that was two. <laughs> I'm trying. Kill Kenny. We'll yeah, count to five. five in the chat. Um. Shrewsbury, Nappers will come to you on this one. Uh, change of manager. You were, you were, I mean, you were right behind Matt Taylor for his tenure. Um, never called for his head, but uh, there's been, since been a change of manager, and they've got a new one in. Who, uh, well, back in in Hurst, he's done very well in his first game away at Northampton. In terms of uh, players that they've recruited over the period of January, they've done okay. They've lost a few players on loan, but they didn't really rip up any trees. A few injuries in there for those. Um, a few loan deals, not very busy, not overly inspiring, but I wouldn't say they're the worst window. It was all right. Um, yeah, Shrewsbury are a club that don't often need to inspire you, to be fair. They get the job done and they do it, you know, in their own way and they don't really need to be, you know, talked about uh, that much. Matt Taylor, I said it, I saw it with Brown last year where he got results. The football was awful and they needed just to go on a poor run and then the football can't be questioned. The football at Peterborough away think that was the game that got him sat. They went 1-0 up. They were horrific. And I mean, I watched 40, 45 minutes of that game back. And wow, it was awful to watch. And um, plan A, and if you win like that, you get no complaints. As soon as you start losing, Christ, there's questions asked. I think they lost seven out of eight. 
against Northampton looked a lot better. You know, Udo coming back into the side as well. Bloxham has come back in. I think he's done quite well since coming back in. Shipley's a good player. So they've just added to a decent core of squad. And again, they're in that bracket of going to be boring between 52 and 58 points. Don't really pull up any trees. And I, I predicted every game to the end of the season. And, you know, um, it, it's kind of like, well, they'll win one, then they'll draw a couple, and they'll lose a couple. Um, I don't think they're quite at the Bristol Rovers, the Lincoln, the Wigan, uh, Northampton type of side, but they're, they're better than the others. I think they're kind of in a bracket with, um, you know, with themselves and Burton. Uh, I see Bristol Rovers have just announced the signing. It's a, a lad from Hull City. Um, so far, his name. Um, Harry Vaughan. Harry Vaughan. Uh, that's right. Um, we'll come back to Bristol Rovers. They're a team that we missed while we uh, waited for that final announcement. Um, haven't touched on Stevenage at all. They've been very quiet on this uh, on this deadline day, but we should touch on their window as a whole. Jake, Steve Evans, the man in charge at Stevenage, not a not a busy one uh, for them, but mm. uh, a left back uh, or left wing back, should I say? Uh, Reading has joined them on loan. Um, needed a goalkeeper replacement, so uh, that was done. And and Vaden Oliver also somebody that super crazy. Gillingham uh, will. Exactly. And uh, Vaden Oliver, of course, was at Gillingham uh, whilst the yeah. Evans was there as well. Other than that, a few players that have left. Not massive issue for me there. Harry Anderson's left on loan. Charlie McNeil didn't really work out um, at, at Stevenage. Other than mm-hmm. that, it's been it's been all right. Again, and it, again, they're in a fantastic position. They've they've improved the positions that they, they're crying out for. Yeah, they've, they've yeah, I agree. They've added a bit of a bit of steel. Um, I think McGillivray adds a lot of experience in goal where you look at the other goalkeeper that they let um, Hedgie go back to West Ham. Um, Teoshby Hammond isn't a massively experienced goalkeeper. So bringing in someone like McGillivray who's got four, five hundred, six hundred maybe even EFL appearances is a, is a really shrewd bit of business. Um, Nesta Guinness-Walker, I don't know loads about him, but from Reading fans, he seemed to get some pretty good reviews and they needed competition at left back for, for Dan Butler, for Butler as a... Uh, as Nappers likes to say. Um, Isn't yeah. it marvellous, eh? Hey, eh? Isn't it marvellous? Um, and then Vidane the Oliver, I think, is a really interesting one. He was at Lincoln um, the year we... Was it the year we first got into the conference and he, he scored a hat-trick away at Hyde United to keep us in the National League, which was quite something. And hopefully it's not a sentence that you boys have to say ever. Um, <laughs> but... It was, um, yeah, it's a really good sign. And obviously, we've seen what he can do with Gillingham. He was a real handful when that, that Gillingham team, uh, during COVID, it looked like they were going to gate crash the playoffs, but wasn't to be. But he was a big part of that. I think he's since then gone to Bradford. It's not really worked out for him at Bradford. Um, they've had some good strikers there with, with Andy Cook and he can't dislodge him. So, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's a good move. He, he plays the, a, a good style. Um, he plays the right style of football for Steve Evans. And um, they're just ticking along. Steve and John, they're bringing in players that that are, uh, are going to improve them. And, and um, fair play to them. They, they seem to be doing just that. Okay. I think I'll just sorry, jump sorry. in briefly with a little time spam. There's still well over 300 of you that are with us, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, what so- you to go to bed? What are you doing? No, don't go to bed. Stay with us oh, for no, the next bed, of yeah. 10, 15 minutes. Right, Andy Moon. And we'll uh we'll yeah, we'll keep going and, and we'll we'll wrap up on, on all the uh all the bits and pieces. If there is anything that you wanted to ask in terms of not necessarily transfers, but anything that you've ever wondered about, Mr. Jack Ward, Mr. Benjamin, or or even Jakey Boy himself, or even even me, if you're that way inclined, then uh let us yeah, know in the live chat down we? below. Sorry? Should we get personal? Well, no, we don't really need no, to know. Ten minutes left, Jake. Don't, need to know. <laughs> don't worry about <laughs> it. Oh, just, just stocking filler, that was all. No, uh, I, we've, we've still got two more clubs. We've still got more business. No, 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 I'm just about. saying that to, to, in preparation for once we've done those clubs, then we can have a little, little bit of a chat with the wonderful people um, at home. I wonder if he's referring to the T-Lot boys or whether he's referring to League One managers. Um, but <laughs> either way, I'm sure we can work yeah, it out. I don't think anyone's going to Let's get, get all the clubs and then we can, uh, we can chat. Uh, Nappers, I'm not going to say what you. What, I'm not going to say it out loud because I don't know if you want me to say it. But you put no, a certain you can. name in. No, reported it. Uh, saying apparently. Sam Smith apparently to Bristol Rovers apparently. No, it's not. That's fake. It's a fake account. Oh, is it fake? Oh, yeah, that is fake. Yeah, it's a fake account. They are trying trying still scoring goals at Reading. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking they about Reading trying though. Trying uh, Vickers has joined Brighton. They're trying to get one more in apparently. 
Interesting. Oh, While you look at that, let's touch on Wigan. Uh, they've signed uh, Luke Chambers, Charlie Good, uh, Kelman, uh, Robinson. Sorry, that's an end of loan there. So just Kelman, Good and Chambers. Uh, in terms of players leaving, of course, we know Callum Lang left the football club, Josh Stones and Luke Robinson. He wasn't there for a very long time, was he? Didn't look quite know what's going on there. Loan transfer out and in. There we go. I'm not quite sure what's going on at Wigan, but there you go. Did he shake um, it all about as well? Yeah, that's he must terrible. Have done, Sorry, he did, well, I must have done because he only lasted. Oh no, yeah, he must have just been there first half of the season. Anyway, the three players are brought in: Luke Chambers, Charlie Good, who we know was a, a really good player at Northampton. Hasn't quite worked out at Brentford since. Charlie Calman wouldn't say he's a prolific goal scorer, uh, but you know we can do need a body up there with, with of course, Callum Lang, their attacker, leaving the club. Um, Tom Wigan, you, you saw them. You've seen them play once this season only. I think you've, they haven't played the, the reverse fixture yet. They're not in a relegation dogfight, I don't think. No, they're happy in mid-table. I don't think they're going to go up, uh, to be honest, this season. But they haven't needed to necessarily bring in loads and loads of players because of their their position at the moment. But I think they've, again, an, one of many clubs that have done just fine, I think. Yeah, I, I think probably it's it's more of a, a big headline-grabbing outgoing story rather than any incomings at, at Wigan Athletic for this January transfer window. Obviously, a long-time servant of the club, Callum Lang, who me and you both saw in the flesh, is absolutely world-class and, and has really hit the ground running already, um, which is great to see. And yeah, I mean, I think it, that was handled in the most amicable way it probably could have done. Um about the right time for club and player obviously was was sort of coming towards the end in terms of his time sorry i'm just reading something on my phone um coventry have agreed a deal for peterborough winger Efron mason clark um which is Long rather back, surely sorry yeah, is it, it, surely peterborough i'm gonna let him go now without no he, right, he, right. he max said unless it's a big no it's a loan i've been reading that it's a loan to a point where they can sorry he can come go back, back there on loan uh, to the end of the season, so they must have agreed a deal now. But he's uh, going to finish the season at, at Peterborough. But still, um, rather exciting. Um, that's very, very late on, though, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, we've what seven minutes to go. That news is breaking. Six minutes to go. You can so, sign paperwork uh, for an hour after, I believe. You can, but we're not staying here for an hour. No, 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 no. We're not. We're not going to wait till Coventry officially announce it. But just to clarify, there, <laughs> of course, there are six minutes to go. But that deal hasn't got to necessarily be signed and sealed uh, but yeah no. Callum Lang obviously the big news and when you've done various videos on him we've spoken about him a lot on on 4 nil here as well um you mentioned Kelman good Luke Chambers obviously a, a, a bit of a, a development loan from uh, from Liverpool's under 21 uh but I think probably the the big one there is is Charlie Good isn't it I think that one that comes in and and and, and as you say it's a little bit of a nothing season for Wigan but and we should mention this as well very much 40 odds away with that points deduction at the start of the season. This could have been a very, very different season uh, had it gone slightly differently for them. So uh, we give a massive credit there. And uh, on to the wonder as we go. Uh, Naples, we'll come to you on, on Wickham. They are technically in a relegation battle. I don't think Wickham are going to Wickham are going to go down. I don't think they are in there. But if you look at the points, you can't move away from that and their form this season. It hasn't been great. But I look at their window. I'm actually quite impressed with the players they brought in. Matt Butcher stands out for me from Plymouth. He is a, a really good signing. 26 yeah. at, at Plymouth. He's, he was good there. And I always sort of looked at that and went, he could, you know, we've spoken about sort of bringing in a defensive midfielder. Someone like Matt Butcher, who is that type of, of caliber of, of name in that area, I think is a really good signing. Um, they've signed a, a few of as well. They've gone back into the West Ham market and, and got Kadua. Not sure about him, not sure too much about him, but I'm, I'm sure they, they trust that loan market um, that West Ham will, will provide the goods. Uh, Bez uh, Laboud has joined on, on a free transfer from, from Burton, too. Uh, Erling, a loan, a loan transfer from Plymouth, also stands out. And Chem, T uh, Chem Campbell has, re has returned after he was on loan last season. All in all, I think Wickham have, have, have done a good job. Um, where do you see them now going back on the pitch? They've done some good business off it, but you have to look at it. They're technically in a relegation battle, but I'm, I'm, I don't think those signings reflect that. They are, and it is signs that can push them on into the top 10. That's how close it is. A couple of wins and all of a sudden, <clears throat> you know, the... Hello, hello. Sorry, my microphone's been playing up lately, so I do apologise. Um, but no, I think it's a, it's a good piece of business. And um, they strengthened, that's all they need to do. Seven games in um, in January, I believe, for, for most clubs as well, if not six. So I think we'll see Wickham clamp the table. 
And that is all of the clubs. We said we come back to them at the end. Are there any clubs that I've mentioned there? Bristol Rovers, I believe that is done. So we can summarise on, on Bristol Rovers. Of course, that was uh, the signing of Harry... V- oh, sorry, what was his Vaughan. name? Harry Vaughan from Hull City. <laughs> Twice I've done that. I will remember his name, hopefully, by the end of... Uh, well, I suppose end of the season. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Uh, Bristol City... Bristol City... God, it's late. Bristol Rovers. Yeah. Bristol Rovers. Uh, summarise on, on them, Jake. Um, business looks done there. The big departure, Aaron Collins, but in terms of the players coming in, we haven't spoken about him yet. Camel Conte, what a signing. Yeah, Camel Conte was making some headlines down the road at uh, our fishy friends at the A46. So very happy that, that someone's taken him off their off their hands. Um, he, he signed from Gateshead, um, had a really exceptional season in the National League, which alerted Grimsby, and he's been exceptional in, in the step up to League Two. Um, he's someone that I think is a very combative, combative midfielder who I think will absolutely make the step into League One. Not, no doubt about it. He's got he's got that core strength, the low centre of gravity, which you can see him move around players relatively easy. Harry Vaughan, um, again, he has played for Grimsby uh, from Hull, but he's a, a young lad that they have a lot of promise for at uh, Hull City. Really highly rated, uh, really quick wide midfielder. I think he's actually played a number of games for them in the first half of the season. But if you look at Hull, look who at Hull have brought in over the, the window with the likes of Carvalho and they've already got Philogene and I think they were linked with that Zaruri from Burnley. I don't know if they've ended up getting him or not, but his game time was, was going to be less and less at Hull. So he's a, a good sign and he's very quick. So that will add a, an extra dimension. But obviously you then have to remember that they've lost Collins and, and he was is a big part of Bristol Rovers and you know his goals and performances. Whilst he might not have scored as many as you as he did last year, um, I, I think they'll be they'll be disappointed to lose a player of his caliber. Maybe you could say that they were lacking a centre forward. Yeah. Obviously, the the, the rumour there about Sam Smith, whether that that was that was true or not, um, I still felt they've left themselves short in that area. But um, you know, this, it's not the end of the window because they can still sign free agents of course and there's also the the opportunity that deals have been done by this point but we just don't know about them yet so uh yeah it's and dan hargreaves did say that that maybe they, they were looking for one more deal so it, it'd be interesting to see maybe in the next hour or so if there are any sky Black league one clubs still doing some business about 15 seconds to go into the window does shut and it strikes 11. Um, we haven't actually heard Cheltenham yet. Uh, they have said they're going to do a signing. They're one of the clubs we'd come back to. So we'll wait until, I presume they're going to do it on the dot. We'll come back to them just as our final bit, just after the, the deadline. Um, I'm just scrolling through desperately. I think Fleetwood, are we are we saying that's done? Uh, done. Nap, Nappers, done. Uh, happy? What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, happy. We've got rid of some players that don't want to be here. We've got players that do want to be here. And it's um it's an eighteen game season now, and uh, look, I don't think a lot. Of, I think we're probably you know looking at League Two for next season. So um, you know we've got some more contracted players for then. So we've uh, we've done well, job done. Uh, Jake, is Lincoln done? Well, no idea. I mean, they haven't announced it. it. Let's let's say they have because I don't want to be here all night. Uh, Lincoln, as it is now, uh, if it did shut, and that is it. How do you reflect on the window? Um. Mixed. I, I like Joe Taylor. Joe Taylor was a great addition. Um, I think he's definitely added something to us in the two games that he's played against Derby and Peterborough. Um, he's a really lively centre forward. But McGrandall's, yeah, it's, it is a little bit sort of underwhelming, I suppose, given how he left. Um, but we do need experience in midfield, and he does provide that. And hopefully, if he can, rec- you know, come back to the form that he had. When he uh, when we first had him uh, during that playoff season, wow. I think we're in for a treat. But uh, Tom's it's wowing. Yeah, yeah, it's not League One related, but Harry McCurdy back to Swindon. Yeah, is, um, yeah, yeah. let's move on. Yeah, it's grim. Um, oh. I hate Swindon a lot. You know, imagine you like... your nearest rival has been Swindon. Come on, they're not Jordan... reading. Jordan Thomas. Uh, well, Jordan? It's, it's Reading. It, it was more. Let's not get into this. Um, by the way, we we spoke about Blackburn and and their the the, the Harry um, Leonard. Leonard. <laughs> there we go. A uh, deal that looked off. Um, I think it is still off because I think loan deals are slightly more complicated to do. We spoke about that affecting the Duncan deal. He's now signed for Blackburn. Um, so I think Oxford must have just said we're going to leave it. 
and maybe Blackburn were taking too long to get that over the line. We said that it was going to rely on that. I don't think Oxford are going to do that deal. We said that the window was, was pretty much shut and we can go to bed. But the deal that we were waiting on seemed to have gone through anyway. I think that is just a, a point to put out there. I do not think that's going to uh, mean anything more. I don't think we desperately need a striker. We needed a midfielder and we got that in. Um, and that's my summary on Oxford United. A, a happy window all in all. Will Goodwin was the striker that we wanted and we got done fairly early. Carl Edwards, we had on loan. He's left Ipswich. We signed him permanently for the final two months of the season. And then hopefully going forward, we can get a contract on him. He was fantastic for us before that injury. A really good 25-year-old winger that has plenty more to give. Owen Dell, exactly the same age profile as, as Carl Edwards, um, similar in terms of the pace he offers. Again, I, I, we, we spoke about Owen Dell. I think he's a, a good signing. Uh, Tyler Bury on loan, already seen glimpses. I think Tom will mention in that first half, Bury looked a, a bit of a nuisance. He was strong. I remember at one point, shocked he went flying and then he ended up back in Pompey. Um, and that was a, that was their that was their centre back. Um, against our winger he's got a real build about him I like Tyler Bury early signs and and, and more to hopefully give uh, Jamie Cumming joined on loan to replace James Beadle and so far that looks um, other than the injury a, a, a decent piece of business and Jamie Tete on loan from Sunderland too extremely happy with that that happened late on on deadline day all in all Oxford United I think Ed Waldron Des Buckingham they've done well uh, really pleased with with that deal and a good way to summarize that I'm now scrolling through we've touched on Port Vale Reading looks done I think we're just waiting on the final Cheltenham deal we're not going to hold it's, uh, them to it's that. a midfielder from Bath is who it is yeah we're definitely not going to hold them on that that sounds awfully dreadful uh it might be a good player but it's not Gordon really Thomas, too much his name is 22 oh, years old by the way, three hundred and seventeen people. I'm. I, I don't. I hate doing it. I hate to say, keep saying it. Um, if you have enjoyed it and you have been with us for the running, um, I'm seven likes away from a hundred. Tom is only a few um, likes away from another milestone as well. I do believe Tom's giving me update on his likes at the moment. So if you did enjoy it, three hundred nineteen people watching across both channels at the moment. Thanks for being with us. It would have been extremely sad if we did this for three hours and nobody watched. And, and thankfully, <laughs> we've had a, um, a great audience with us. The live chat's been fantastic. We're not going to go this second. We'll summarise the final boys for the final few minutes. Um, Tom, anything you'd like to say before we uh, we do wrap this one up? Just an absolute privilege to be in the company of you three and everyone joining us in, in the live chat tonight as well. It's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'll uh, I'll go into a, a little bit of detail on, on Pompey in a moment. Logan, you can go to bed. Yes, thank you for being with us. Um, I just feel like it's been a, a three and a bit hour long tea lop, which has been really enjoyable. A little bit more obviously structured with... Uh, the various different bits and pieces uh, people very grateful for for everything in in terms of tonight which is great um I, yeah we're absolutely delighted that so many people have stuck with us and uh really pleased that we did it with the four of us it was a, a new format that me and Wardy were talking about today that we wanted to try out and I, i'm glad it's gone really well um aaron's been it's here for the last happy. three hours um and i'm, I'm just delighted for, that everyone's joined us and, and has joined us for, for a duration as well there have been a lot of people who've been here right from the start i remember saying three hours ago to people look it'd be amazing if you could stick with us for as long as you possibly can and and you all have done um a very quickly briefly wrap up on pompey the, you know feel, feel like a news and you know when you watch the news and like with <laughs> the next hour they then say the same thing and then they go and say the next thing um but Again, the, the best way to describe it is aggressive, mocks onto the mix alongside Pitt Harris, Lang and Macy. I, I know there were concerns heading into January about the automatic promotion spots for Pompey and whether that faith in us was wavering a little bit. Um, I think we've we are up there for one of the best windows in league one i'm absolutely delighted that we've gone into january in not the best vein of form and we've come out and given ourselves a really really good chance at an automatic promotion spot now and i'll say that with my chest now and i'm, I'm happy to be proven wrong because there are some fantastic sides in this division and we all know that but Pompey's done absolutely everything they can. Richard Hughes is an absolute diamond of a bloke. I love the way he's worked with John Messino this month. I think their working dynamic is absolutely spectacular and great credit to the owners as well because I reckon Pompey has spent unconfirmed and obviously we're live on YouTube and I, I, I don't want to be quoting figures that aren't right because that's really important not to, but I believe it's in the region of seven to 750K, um, which is absolutely brilliant. And, you know, put your hands in your pockets. It's been spent well. People have said to me today that, Owen Moxon wouldn't have joined the club um, 
if it hadn't been for Richard Chews in the director of football role, I think that's absolutely massive um, and, and is really important to remember. Also, the, the Mars Pitt Harris being patient and waiting for that to become available. The nous and, and the shrewdness about our January business has been nothing short of exceptional. So, uh, yes, aside for the leaders, McIntyre, Lang, Mox, and as I mentioned to you earlier on, Jack, all captain their former clubs. Um, so, uh, people coming in and, and have been put some really nice stuff in, in the comments, apart from Reese. Um, and uh, Proud Daddy, who was an interesting name, but I uh, appreciate the sentiment dad. nonetheless yeah, a lot better than the, the Sky Sports rubbish, which is very nice of you. Uh, Tropical One has enjoyed himself. Uh, Patrick's off, and uh, thank you very much to Brian for joining us. And Logan reckons that the hour went long, and uh, Northampton fans been enjoying the, our company with us too. So uh, thank you very much indeed for all joining us. Sean's enjoying himself. Nappers, have you enjoyed yourself as much as the viewers at home seem to have? Absolutely. Absolutely. Before you answer that question, I can tell you that while you do answer it, Bristol Rovers are about to do another late sign, and that's interesting mm. to see. Dappers. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me on again. I think I need to echo any, any more words that you just said. Been been a, been a nice few hours and uh, yeah, just talking football. Thanks for having me on. Jake, Jake any idea what that Bristol Rovers signing could be? And also, uh, uh, I've got no idea because it's just a video of Davina McCall, isn't it? So it'll be interesting to see if that's going to be. But, um... What a fabulous oh, good on him. Yes, maybe. I, I, maybe. Surely they're not going to sign Sam Smith. Well, they're not going to let Sam Smith go out at this time of night, are I don't they? know. They've got a CEO sure. that seems to be approving everything at the moment. I bet Reading are wishing that he had a tag on or something so that he couldn't leave the Reading area after 11 o'clock at night. He had one of those electronic tags. But um, no idea who this is going to be. But have I had a fun? Yeah, I've had a, I've had a great time. I mean, a bit, dis, a bit disappointed in, in, in what's come in, but... Um, uh, yeah, no, it's been good. It's, it's yeah, I've enjoyed it. I'm absolutely shattered, but uh, no, all it's been good, boys. It, you, it, you don't realise, and some, the people who are watching don't sometimes don't realise how much doing one of these can drain, you, like take it out of you a little bit. And I'm sat here thinking, I'm going to sleep well tonight. My goodness me! Um, Someone said earlier, can the tea loppers go to bed? They can go to bed. The tea loppers can go. Yeah, we're not signing anybody. Um, not that I know of, anyway. Should we wrap it up there? I think we could. We could wait for Love Bristol, it, Bristol Rovers, but I don't think I don't think we're going to. Uh, we'll wait and see what that is. We'll give our thoughts maybe on our social medias. If it's a big name like Sam Smith, we'll have to wait and see. Um, what is it with the Bristol Rovers doing deals when we finish a stream? Uh, or unlike like, like in, uh, in mm. the summer when we thought they were going to do... Uh, a Johnson Clark House reunion that didn't happen, but uh, we'll wrap it up there. It's um, it's been great fun. I'm not going to repeat what the boys have said. I agree with every word that they've said. It, it was a, a really really fun show, and um, we've we've had a we've had a good laugh as we always do. Tom mentioned it briefly, and I can echo it. We're trying to be a little bit different this January. We've we've moved away from uh, sort of a, a format that we've done for the, the first two, but I, I think I get the gist that people have enjoyed this. I think there's way more interaction interaction with the chat. I think we're able to sort of speak about every single club. I've really enjoyed that aspect of it. I think in previous ones, we sort of walked away and gone, we haven't spoken about seven or eight clubs and, and they haven't got a mention in three hours, which is ridiculous. Whereas this time we've been able to touch on every single club. So I've really enjoyed that. Until next time, thank you very much. Um, subscribe, leave a like on your way out. Peter Brahava just officially said he will return to Posh and Loan to the end of the season. That's Mason Clark to Coventry. Bristol Rose, we're still waiting for them. We will not wait on here on the stream we'll just say goodbye thank you very much everybody if you've just been here for 10 minutes or three and three hours and 10 minutes we, we appreciate every single one of you and uh we'll see you very very soon love you lots take care it's been emotional play up pompey up the tea lot